Hello and welcome to Ellis Oval as we welcome you here today as the Tufts Jumbos play host to the Hamilton Continentals in a NESCAC football showdown. Both teams come in 3-3 three and three today, coming off of big NESCAC wins. Brandon, what do you see for today's game? Well, I'm looking on the Hamilton side. The key will be stopping a Tufts air attack that averages a NESCAC best 277 yards per game with 11 touchdowns on the air. Jacob Carroll, the starting quarterback for Tufts, loves his two upperclassmen receivers in Frank Roach and O.J. Armstrong, with the former having tallied more than twice as many receiving yards as Will Bunnington, the leading receiver for the Continentals. Armstrong tied a Tufts record with three receiving touchdowns last weekend and leads the NESCAC in receptions with 41. That was Brandon Browse. I am Noah Goldstein. We'll be here for commentary for today's game. As the Jumbos are set to receive, it will be important for them to get on the board early. As we've seen in the Jumbos' wins, they've scored a lot of points. In the losses, the offense has struggled significantly. So getting off to a fast start will be important here. Absolutely. We're going to see how early they go to that passing attack as the kick is off. John Andre back deep to receive. He'll take it out. He's out room across the 20, and he'll be dragged down at about the 23-yard line. So that's where the Jumbos will begin this one. Look for them to get the running back Mike Padrini going early. Obviously, we know the air attack can do some damage. Hamilton's susceptible to the air attack, but we'll see if they can try and get the running game going as well early on. Yeah, we've seen the Jumbos mix in multiple quarterbacks in weeks past. This week, they will start with Jacob Carroll, the more traditional pocket passer out there to start. Right. Here's Carroll. It's Don Borelli in the backfield. Borelli takes the handoff. He cuts back, and he'll make it across the 25 to about the 26 for a gain of three. There's a nice little hole there at the beginning. A good job by the Hamilton secondary and linebacking core to, to get to him quickly and make that only a gain of two or three. Interesting to see Borelli get the first take there. Mike Pedrini has dominated the run game. Really, everyone was getting going on uh, all cylinders for the tough rushing attack last week. All... It's seven touchdowns in total, four of them on the ground. This give is to Pedrini. Pedrini cuts back. He's got a little bit of room to run. Out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. So that will set up a third and two for the Jumbos on that gain of five. It was a nice Mike job. Pedrini. Nice job by Pedrini finding the hole. It was a good motion there from Tufts. Uh, we'll see what they do here on third and two. Yeah, as Brandon mentioned, the Jumbos with a big 49-0 to homecoming win last week. See if they can build off of that, keep the offense moving for sure. They did. They're only nine yards short of their single, uh, single game record in terms of yardage. Carroll takes the snap here and the give is to Borelli. Borelli looking for room, does not find it. much and he's piled up very little gain if there is any. Let's see where he is marked down. It'll be close but I don't think he got it. Interesting that they go with three straight rushing plays on the first possession. The Jumbo seem to be keeping the offense out there. They're going to measure here. They are going to bring up the chains. We'll see. Just eyeballing it. What do you think, Noah? You think he got it? Doesn't look like it to me. So both teams coming off of big emotional wins last week. The Jumbos obviously with that one in blowout fashion. Hamilton had a big win over Amherst in which they came back from being down late in the fourth, scored 14 points in the last four minutes to win the game. And the Jumbos get the first down there, so picking up a first down on the first drive. Yeah, it was an interesting call. When he first when the first play first happened, I didn't think he picked it up, but uh, apparently the refs saw the spot differently. Jumbos will take it. I'd be surprised if they went back to the run here on first down. Carroll set with Borelli to his right in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Takes the give, throws out wide. OJ Armstrong catches it. Armstrong, not much room to run. He'll pick up one or two. OJ Armstrong, look for him to get a, a lot of targets today. Now, with his 42nd catch of the year, he leads the NASCAC in that stat. Yes, Armstrong is a favorite for Carroll. He's a little bit more of the possession receiver yeah. as opposed to Frank Roach, who is more of a big play threat. He's third in the NASCAC in receiving yards, first in yards per catch as well. Carroll takes a snap here. He's looking to pass. Throws to his left. Short. Looking for Don Borelli out of the backfield. He left that one a little low. Borelli unable to come up with it. Yeah, Borelli could have had that one. I mean, it was a, it was a short throw. 
Would have only been a gain of about five or six, um, but Carroll just underthrew it. So that will set up a third and eight for the Jumbos at their own 35-yard line. This would be a big defensive stop by Hamilton. They almost stopped him last possession, but here would be a good momentum stopper to, to halt Tufts on their first drive. Carroll will stay out there here. Borelli again, the back to his left. They set up in the shotgun. Three receivers wide to the left, one to the right. Carroll looking. Big block there by Borelli. Carroll fires, looking for O.J. Armstrong, and it's intercepted at the 49-yard line. Interception made there for Hamilton. Ian Esselker with the interception there. That was a great play. Just drop back in coverage. It was man-man, but then he moved. He threw it a little bit late. Esselker, Esselker read the route, jumped on it, picked it off. There's the throw to start the game. Kenny Gray looking for his receiver. Okay. Um, one of the main stars on this Hamilton offense. That will set up a second and 10 for the Hamilton Continentals at the Jumbo 48. Interesting that Kenny Gray and the Continentals come out with a passing play to start. They are usually a run dominant team. David Kagan having a big season, their running back. Second in the second in the NASCAR in yards, and they're going Gray looking for Eric again. Kim. Incomplete, looking for Buddington. Not much there. Good coverage by Miles Ship. Well, you see, it's interesting. Tufts, known for their passing offense, starts off their first drive with three straight runs. Hamilton taking the opposite approach. They are known for their running attack, going with two straight passes. We'll see what they do here on third and long. A little bit of deception. You have to think that they're going back to the pass here. Gray sneaks away, scrambles to his left. He's looking to run. Just throws it out of bounds, so the Jumbos will hold there. Great coverage there from Tufts. Good turnaround following the interception. They'll get the ball back. Jovan no Anatovic, good pressure on the outside. Forced Kenny Gray out of the pocket. And good coverage all around. Gray unable to find her man. And John and Andre will be back to receive this punt for the Jumbos. Yeah, like Noah said, it was Anatovic on the, on the pressure. He has five sacks tied for, the first, tied for first in the NESCAC along with 11 tackles for loss, also tied for first in the NASCAC. This punt is a short and low one. Andre will let it bounce. That's going to go inside the 10. Fortunate roll and will be down at the boat. one or two yard line. Wow. That was a great punt. Got the perfect amount of spin on it, rolled it, and it was well, well down by Ken Mike Keynes. So the Jumbos will start deep in their own territory here at the one-yard line. You have to think that they're going to go to the run here. Hamilton's going to stack the box, though. Carroll's the quarterback. He's got Borelli as the back behind him. The give is to Borelli. Borelli finds a little bit of room to run, and it looks like he's out past the five to about the six. Now give yourself a little bit of breathing room. That's exactly what they did. So that will set up a second and five on the six. Interesting to see Don Borelli getting the playing time he has so far over Mike Petrini. Carroll throws here. That one is caught by Winton Blunt. Winton Blunt makes a man miss and crosses the 10. That should, if it doesn't pick up a first, it's going to be very close. Good play there by Winton Blunt to make the catch, shake off the first tackler, and go for a big gain. Winton Blunt not known for his receiving. That's only a seventh reception of the year, and it will be third and short. Jacob Carroll in the gun. Borelli, the back to his left again. Now he goes to his right. Carroll, the give is to Borelli. Borelli's got the first down and more, and he's wrestled down at the 14-yard line, but not until he picks up the first down. It's a good hole created there by the Tufts offensive line. Not a ton of room, but enough to get the first down, and that's all that matters. Keep the chains moving. Try and continue this drive. Coming out with a lot of big sets here in this drive. Multiple tight end looks. Something interesting to keep in mind. Hamilton, not exactly known for their pressure. They only have five sacks, but they're... Jacob Carroll in the shotgun. Borelli, the back to his left. The give is to Borelli. Borelli, not much doing there. And he'll be dragged down at the line of scrimmage. That was a great play by Alex Street. Got to him quickly, wrestled him down, made sure he couldn't escape. So Borelli will limp off the field now. Uh, 
So now instead of Pedrini, we see Tyler Johnson coming on playing running back. And we have our first Trevon Woodson sighting of the day. He's the quarterback for this second and 10 snap. The offense has been fairly stagnant, so we'll see what he Woodson can do. He takes the snap. He fakes the give. He takes it himself. He's got a pretty big gain out across the 20 to the 22-yard line. That's a bit of the different look we've seen from the Jumbos in the there past couple of weeks. It'll be interesting to see how they utilize the young Woodson. He's the freshman. He's the, he's the quarterback of the future for the Jumbos, and he'll do that to you. He zigzagged all the way close to the first down. Great gain of nine. And it's going to be a different look that the Hamilton defense has to, has to deal with. Trevon Woodson again in the gun. Tyler Johnson in the back to his left. Third and one here on the Jumbo 21. What's in the snap is bobbled. He tries to fall on it. There's a pile there. We'll see who this Hamilton ball says is. They have Hamilton it. Hamilton says they have it. Wow, unfortunate break there for the Jumbo. And they do. It will be Hamilton ball. Handle it. Hit it, bounced in the air, and took an unfortunate bounce it, into Hamilton hands. It was a tough snap for Woodson to control. Woodson to control. Center Mike Mulvaney, a little high. I mean, definitely could have been corralled by Woodson, but like Noah said, an unfortunate break for Tufts. And now Hamilton looking to capitalize on this opportunity. Kenny Gray in the shotgun here. Look for a running David play Kagan here. in the back to his right. Gray takes the snap. The give is to Kagan. Kagan's got a little bit of room to run. He shakes to the three-yard line. Gain of seven. Kagan second in the NESCAC in rushing yards. So and we'll see. No they surprise they're using him in the red zone here. He leads the Nest Tech with seven rushing touchdowns. Jumbo Faithful are loud here at Ellis Oval, trying to hold Hamilton to three here. Tough should be expecting the run, but we'll see if it's enough to stop it. Gray in the gun. He's going to throw it, looking. And that ball is bobbled and cannot be caught by Kristen Donahoe. It's a great play by Brandon Jones in the back of the end zone, number one corner for Tufts. He's had a great season thus far. Just broke up the pass at the very end. Looked like it was a touchdown, but Brandon Jones coming up clutch. Yeah, good coverage throughout, throughout. Brandon Jones, single coverage there. Kagan, the back to his left. Receivers split out to the left and right. Gray's looking to throw. He's got his man, and that's going to be caught for a Hamilton touchdown. The receiver, Sam Robinson. Well, hacking the run, did not have as good of coverage out wide, and that will go in for an early six for the Hamilton Continentals. Yeah, Sam Robinson, far and away the all-purpose yards leader for, for Hamilton. They use him in a few different roles as he rushes the ball some, sometime, but mostly known for his receiving, and he gets the reception there for the touchdown. And the extra point is up and good. And Hamilton is out to a 7 to nothing lead. So unfortunate start for the Jumbos. They've shown a little bit of promise on the offensive end. Haven't been blessed with great field position. But they've picked up first downs on both their drives. Of course, that last drive was plagued by the fumble. The, the defense has looked solid as well. The defense has looked solid, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. It was unfortunate field position that Hamilton got, but on the first possession, Hamilton didn't really get any yards, or didn't get any yards, in fact. And you can see Mulvaney and Woodson practicing the snap to make sure a similar mistake doesn't happen. Except that Mike Pedrini, we've yet to see a lot of him. Borelli was the start, looking like the starter. He gets hurt. They go with Tyler Johnson. We'll see if he gets some more action or if this is more of an off day for him. Sam Thoreen back to kick for the Continentals. John Andre to receive the deep man for the Jumbos. Something else to keep in mind for Hamilton, Sam Thoreen yet to miss a field goal this year. Eight for eight, he is now 16 for 18 on extra points, but perfect so far on field goals. Thoreen boots that one deep. Andre is gonna receive it at his own goal line. He's gonna take it out. Got a little bit of room to run. Then he's gonna be dragged down at the 19 yard line. Not much room. No, it's been good open field tackling for Hamilton thus far. We'll see if that can continue or if Tufts can get a uh, break on this drive. So we said that the Jumbos have this awesome throwing attack. Jacob Carroll, third in the nest pack in passing yards. A good amount for Trevon Woodson as well. They've gone to the run. They have gone to the run. Only, one only two uh, completions thus far for Carroll, both on screen plays. As they go to the run again here. 
Tyler Johnson gains a couple before being stopped at the 21 yard line. Really nothing doing eight. on the ground for Tufts. The only sizable gain was on the Woodson run. We made a few nice zigzags to get close to the first down before the fumble. So second and eight at the Jumbo 21. Jacob Carroll, the quarterback. Now we see Mike Pedrini as the back to his left. We'll see what Pedrini's role Carroll here is. The snap, he's looking to pass. Looking down the middle of the field, that's a strike and it's gonna be caught by Donahoe in the middle of the field. Jack Donahue with a good reception there, the tight end. Yeah, Jack Donahue just found some space there over the middle. Carroll found him. And it's gonna be tough for Hamilton. Tufts has a lot of weapons. You gotta keep an eye on everyone. And Donahue is someone who's not as widely targeted as, uh, widely targeted as Armstrong and Roach. So we'll see if he's gonna have some more space to do with some work. So first and 10 at the Jumbo 32. Jacob Carroll in the, shot, in the eye formation here. The give is to Pedrini, and Pedrini's wrestled down in the backfield. Good play by James Ball, one of the terrific defenders for the Hamilton Continentals. Yeah, when you look at the Continentals defense, you have James Ball and Carmine Bruno, who lead this defense. Carmine Bruno, fourth in the NESCAC in tackles, but a great play there by James Ball, who leads this defensive end front. Yeah, Ball now with nine and a half tackles for loss on the year. Fourth in the NESCAC coming into today. So Carroll is in the shotgun for a second and 12 snap here. He's dropping back, looking to pass. Looking, he's scrambling out to his right. It's chased by pressure. He's gonna, has a little bit of run. He looks to run and he'll pick up about four. Two yards across the initial line of scrimmage. Good mobility there by Jacob Carroll. Just nothing doing. He had Frank Roach at the very end, but he couldn't hang in the pocket long enough to see that. Had to escape, made a play, gain a four. Not too bad, it'll set up third and manageable but it'd be big for Tufts to pick up a first down here and not give the ball right back to Hamilton. Third and nine of the Jumbo 33. Carroll in the shotgun, Pedrini the back to his right. Jack Donahue across the formation motion. Carroll takes the snap, he's dropping back, looking to pass, looking deep, he's got Roach! Roach can't hold on! The throw was a little bit behind him and it fell out of his hands. It's a great play by the sophomore Christian Snell, similar to Brandon Jones in the end zone on the previous drive. Roach had a chance, Snell knocked it, off, knocked it out of his hands in the end. Just underthrown by Carroll, but it was a good decision there. And that's what I think Tufts should be doing more. They should be attacking the long ball. That's where Hamilton is susceptible on the defense. And that's what their specialty is. So we'll see how much longer they stick with these runs on first and second downs. Patrick Walsh back to punt here. Yeah, Roche had a, a little bit of separation. He did. Walsh's punt is a short one. That one's gonna go out of bounds. I don't know if he got any yards on that punt. Really oh, a poor man. punt. I don't think anyone got a hand on it. Wouldn't surprise me though if that, if that is what happened. Walsh rolled out to the right, was not able to set his feet really, flubbed that one, he punted from the 33, and I think that they're gonna spot this one at the... I think at the 33. 36 yard line, so net of three. So if you look at Hamilton's starting field position, first drive started at their own 48, then they took over at the 10, and now at the 36 of Tufts. Tougher Tufts to deal with that on defense. Kagan gets the give here, he picks up a couple and he's dragged down at the 32-yard line after a gain of four. And that's what Hamilton's going to do. They're going to tie you out with the run. They're going to keep going back to Kagan. And then once you think you're safe with the run, they're going to go to the passing attack, which is how they scored the touchdown last drive. Yeah. Kenny Gray is only one for five to start this game. That's just the second rushing attempt for the Continentals. Really unorthodox given their style of offense. But yeah. Absolutely. They saw something in Tufts' game plan for sure. Kenny Gray looking to throw again. He's got his man, Buddington, across the middle. He catches it for a first down. Buddington, the leader in receiving yards. Look for him to have a big game tonight. Michael Mugetto eventually brings him down, but not until a gain of, of 10. And that will set up a Hamilton Continentals first down at the 33 of the Jumbos. Christian Donahoe, the number one receiver for Hamilton, is being covered by Brandon Jones. So, Oh, Brandon Jones actually switching right now. Onto Buddington, we'll see if that's a change just for right now or for the rest of the game. Gray 
gives to Kagan. Kagan's got a little bit of room to run before he's dragged down by Greg Holt for the Jumbos. That's a gain of two. Ball came out, but it looked like he was down. Holt, as you mentioned, second in the NESCAC in tackles. Second in the NESCAC in tackles. He actually just surpassed 300 tackles for his Tufts career. A fabulous career this, uh, the senior has had. Yes, yeah, senior captain. Illustrious career, as you've said. Greg Holt is the heart and soul of this defense he's from that led, linebacker position. He's led the team in tackles the last five games, and the last four have all been double digits. Gray takes the snap, fakes the gift to kick, and he's dropping back, looking to throw deep towards the end zone. Caught for a touchdown by Will Buddington. That was a great play. It was a great throw by Kenny Gray. He saw Buddington over the middle, and he got him. Put it just into the window that he needed to, and it's a two-touchdown lead for Hamilton. Yeah, the Jumbos, this is not the start they wanted. As we mentioned, they are a high-volume offense in their wins this year. Have not gotten out to the offensive start they would have liked to with two turnovers now and, and a punt gone wrong, and they find themselves in a deficit. you got to wonder what's going through the minds of Hamilton on the bench. Down 14 with four minutes left against Amherst last weekend. Hadn't beaten Amherst in 21 years. They come back, win that game, and they jump out to an early lead here. Hamilton, look out, getting psyched. They have a matchup with Middlebury, undefeated Middlebury, coming up. We'll see if they can do any damage and maybe finish off the year with three straight wins. Yeah, big possession for the Jumbos here to try and get something going. See, actually, Tyler Johnson's going to be the deep man to receive this kick. A little bit of a different look. We've seen a lot of John Andre in that role this season. Yes, we He's have. He's flanked out to the left now. See, it'll be interesting to see whether what, what Tufts offense does. Do they stick with Carroll? Do they, do they put Woodson in for a few more plays? And how's the Mike Pedrini situation going? Don Borelli, we saw leave early with an injury. He's questionable to return. But we'll see what they do with Pedrini and Tyler Johnson, who's also been getting some yards. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be surprising to see them come out with a bit of a different look this, uh, this drive for sure. We've seen them mix it up a lot on the offensive end in recent weeks. Jacob Carroll thus far, just three for six, 17 yards and an interception. Trevon Woodson on the, only in for two plays. One of them was the fumble, the other one the nine-yard gain. Maureen with the kick. That's going to be received by Johnson. There is very little there, but he cuts back and finds a little bit of room. He crosses the 10, crosses the 20, and will be out of bounds. Thinking about the, uh, let's see whether they mark him. I may have given a little bit too much credit. They may mark him down here at the 16 or so. Well, it was a great cutback by Tyler Johnson. On the first look, I thought he was going to be tackled inside the 10. Makes a good cut and gives them a little more breathing room, but really not the kickoff Tufts was looking for. And here is Woodson coming out. We'll see how long he stays out for on this drive. So he'll start this drive at his own 16-yard line. Looks like Don Borelli back in there, so... He's doing all right. He's the back to his left. Well, look, do they still try and establish the run on first down, or are they going to go to the air sooner? Borelli goes to his right. Woodson takes the snap. The give is to Borelli. Borelli to his left. He cuts back and finds a couple out to the 19-yard line, gain of three. That was a good cutback by Borelli, but the running offense still really not working for Tufts. We'll see if that will continue throughout the game or if they're going to try and go more to the passing attack. Yeah, we'll see. The Jumbos did this recently uh, in some of their games where they had a lot of Woodson on first and second downs and Carroll on third. Woodson takes the snap, fakes the give. He takes it himself, finds one or two, not much. Really still not anything going for, for the running offense. Just one. about. Hamilton, this is Tufts third possession. This is Hamilton's, uh, sorry, this is Tufts fourth possession. Hamilton doing a great job keeping Armstrong and Roach under wraps thus far. Jacob Carroll now back in there for this third down. Once again, the more traditional pocket passer of the Tufts quarterback duo. Tufts on the year, 30% on third downs. Slightly higher percentage, 38. I think they're a little too deep right now on the run. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Oh, no. So a five yard penalty will push the Jumbos back a little bit more. Yeah, that 30% mark on third down is very low for the Jumbos. It is uh, very low. Definitely something that they'd like to improve on today. And you gotta wonder if they have any less confidence in their punter after that just three yard punt last time. Maybe they'll just try and make up some yardage here. 
Carroll dropping back, looking to pass. Throws a little bit of screen pass out to Borelli. Borelli's got a little bit of room to run. And then he is brought down. Big, strong tackle there by James Ball. Running from the backfield to make that tackle. It was a creative play there by Tufts. It definitely got them a lot of yards back. Good screen, good blocking, and James Ball. We're going to have to watch out for him all day long if you're the Tufts offensive line. So I think... Jumbo's offense is still out there. Third down now to the Jumbos. Carroll dropping back, looking to pass, throws out wide to Borelli to his right. Borelli's got a little bit of room to run, and he lunges. I think they're going to call him a little bit short of the first down. It was a good effort by Borelli. It was tough. I couldn't tell if he got it. It was very close. They're going to call fourth down now. Now we'll see. It would be interesting. Down big early. If you're... Jay Savetti of the Jumbos, do you consider going for this one? I mean, I absolutely do. I think, you know, Hamilton, on the other, on, you have two sides here. You have Hamilton who started the ball with great field possession both times. And if you punt the ball away, you're giving them, you're feeding into their momentum. Savetti's going to bring out the punt team. Probably advisable given they are fourth and a long one punting from the 25 right. now. But you have to think it was going through his head. Maybe pick up a little bit of momentum with a fourth down conversion. Instead, forced to punt. Patrick Walsh back there to do the punting. Takes the snap, rolls out to the right again. This is a There's much a better one. punt. It's going to be out of bounds, though. We'll see where they mark it. Uh, official keeps walking. And he's going to mark it at the Hamilton 48. So shockingly... This is the first drive of the game that Hamilton has started in their own territory, even if it is barely so. Well, we'll see. Essentially what Jay Savetti was saying, he knows his offense is struggling, but he doesn't care. He's going to put the defense out there. He knows they can get a stop, and they can hand the, offense, they can hand the ball back to the offense. Still only the first quarter, though. We have a lot of game left to be played. So Kenny Gray back there again. Joe Park, the back to his right. Park had a lot of carry in the last game, and that's a good one there. Picks up about six. Yeah, both Park and Kagan had 10 carries last, last game. It was Park, though, who led the team in yards with 61, along with a touchdown. And see, here's the thing. Hamilton, with their rushing attack, they can get four or five yards every, most downs. And so when Tufts runs the ball and only gets a yard or two, it puts them in a harder position later in the downs um, as they have to throw the ball. Here they have options, or well, Hamilton does, second and five. Yeah, Kenny Gray has opened up a lot of room for the running game with his passing attack so far, and that will be a first down for Joe Park as he crosses the 40 to the 39-yard line. Hamilton keeping on moving the chains. We'll see if Tufts can stop them if they'll put up more points in this first quarter. Better mark him down at the 40, but that will pick up a continental first down. So the Jumbos are... Not in great shape right now. They're looking a little shaky on both <laughs> sides of the ball and special teams. All in all, it's not the start that they had hoped for following their blowout of Bowden last weekend. Kenny Gray back. He fakes the give, looking to pass, throwing. Buddington again. Buddington close to the first down. He'll be wrestled down a little bit short, I think. So they keep on going to Buddington. You saw Brandon Jones, the corner for Tufts, had a, the first. had a good play on Donahoe in the, in the, red, in the uh, end zone. Two possessions ago for Hamilton, but now they switched Jones on to Buddington. Buddington doing, going to work. And he's made a few nice catches. Yeah, Kenny Gray in that passing attack have not gone for the deep, deep ball, but they're finding 10, 15 yard gains when they need them. Gray with a give here to Park. Park is stood up at the line, then shakes free, and he will pick up a gain of four. Good, strong run there by Joe Park. Well, Nanadovich had him in the backfield. But Park was able to escape. You also had Greg Holt come up and make a play. Park got by both of them. And those, if, if you're toughs, so those are the two guys you want trying to bring your running back down in the backfield. He's just able to escape and pick up four. So it looks like Hamilton will let the clock wind down to end the first quarter here. The Jumbos facing a 14-0 deficit at the end of the first. Hamilton knocking on the door as well to try and add to that lead. Definitely a tough start for the Jumbos. We had a little bit of concerns about them coming off of that blowout win, facing a little bit of a letdown. That has happened in a big way so far today. Uh, 
and the Jumbos will need to cure that in the next three quarters to make this a competitive game, hopefully one that they can win. Well, both teams sitting at 3-3 three and three in the NASCAR right now in the middle of the pack. It was going to be a big game for both of them as we enter the final third of the season. Um, and like you said, a tough start for Tufts, mistake after mistake, not establishing the run game. And Hamilton's been on the total opposite end of the spectrum. Almost everything working for them. Um, and we'll see if they can continue to build on this momentum. But this could get out of hand quick if Tufts doesn't step up. For sure. It, it has really been tough on both sides of the ball for the Jumbos. The defense has to be feeling a little bit angry because they haven't been put in positions for success either. Uh, as we mentioned, the worst starting field position that the Continentals have had was on their own 48-yard line. So short fields for them. The Jumbo's defense pressed into spaces. Two turnovers in the first half. A bunch of errors that cost them yards. The Jumbos will need to clean that up if they want a shot in this one. What's also tough about the field position battle is when you give the ball to Hamilton that close, even if they don't score, they can pin you deep. That's exactly what they did on the toughest second drive. Gray fakes the give to Park, throws out wide. That one's caught, but wrestled down is Donahue. Good tackle there by Brandon Jones. Tufts on offense, though, is having a hard time doing anything but screens to catch balls. Hamilton tries one there, doesn't do much. But their offense, the, the passing attack, has been working for them. That will set up a third and three at the Jumbo 23 for the Hamilton Continental. This would be a big stop here for Tufts, forcing a tough field goal. The parents Sam and families here can feel the momentum in this snap. Park with the run, and he'll pick up a first. Sam Park just looking like he runs downhill. He's been a spark to this Hamilton offense. He's the reason they won last game, and he's been helping them here so far. So it will be a first and 10 for the Hamilton Continentals back in the red zone at the 19-yard line of the Tufts Jumbos. Kenny Gray back in the shotgun for this snap. Joe Park, four rushes for 20 yards. Gray takes the snap to give it to Park again. Park is wrestled down there. Good play in the backfield by Joe Vaughn and out of it. And we were wondering when he was going to make an impact. That will probably be the first of many tackles in the backfield. That's his 12th tackle for a loss. Now first in the NASCAR. But it was a big play there, stopping the run. Now it'll be second and 10. And out of it, only a sophomore has been a force for this tough defensive front this year. He certainly has been, along with Greg Holt, the biggest impact player on this defense. Second and 10 now for the Continentals. Gray in the gun, takes the snap, takes the gift to Park and takes it himself. He's got some room to run. First down and more, crossing the 10 to the eight yard line. Good little read option there. Run by Kenny Gray. And that's the thing with Kenny Gray. You can't run, he can beat you with his legs just as, just as well as he can beat you with his arm. Part of the reason why Hamilton is so good on this rushing attack, you just think he's handing it off to Joe Park. He said it takes it for a first down. So it'll be first and goal on the eight for the Continentals. Kenny Gray, snap actually, the ball next. Kenny Gray actually coming into this game second on the team in rushing yards, only behind David Kagan. That'll be an extra 12 right there. Yeah, I mean, this, this rushing attack for Hamilton is definitely formidable. Most teams look to set up the run, set up the pass with the run. Hamilton's done the opposite today. Park shakes a man, makes one miss with a spin move, and walks into the end zone. Impressive run there, and the Continentals will be up three touchdowns. I mean, when you look at this rushing attack that Hamilton has, you have Park, you have Kagan, and you have Kenny Gray. It's kind of hard to believe that they're only 3-3. Three and three. They're making another 3-3 three and, three and three team. And Tufts, who's a very good defense, who's had one all year, looks silly on rushing defense, and it's already 20 to nothing. Yeah, unfortunate start for the Jumbos for sure. As you mentioned, the three main guys there, Gray, Kagan, and Park, pretty unstoppable for the Jumbos so far. They're going to need to stop them in the backfield for short loss, short gains if they want any shot in this one. The Jumbos generally will look to set up that play action and go deep with the pass. Yes. We saw, we were a little confused by the pass heavy attack of the Continentals on that first drive. And they've showed why so far. They really have used it to set up this running game of theirs 
They wanted to establish the fact that, hey, we have Kenny Gray. He can throw the ball. You have to respect that, but now we're going to run it down your throats, and that's exactly what they just did on that drive. Right, and you can see the difference here. Both teams had a tough first possession, but it was really the turnover, the Woodson fumble, that has turned the tides of this game. Ever since then, Hamilton started the ball at the 10-yard line, and they've had three possessions, three touchdowns. Tough still struggling to find really any momentum on offense, and I think that, that is, has been the turning point thus far. Thorin, busy day so far, kicking off. This will be his fifth time. Fourth time, fourth time. This one will be received by Johnson. He'll take it at about the five. Got a little bit of room. Goes up the middle, makes one miss. Oh, and he almost sprung it outside and tackled by the legs. Wrestled down at the 32 yard line. But a good return there by Tyler Johnson. Yeah, it was Sam Bowen who made the stop. If he got by him, he would have been gone. It was a great run back by Tyler Johnson. Maybe that's the spark Tufts needed. Great, better field position than they've had thus far, starting at the 33, but a great run back from Tyler Johnson. Carroll back there as the quarterback, Mike Pedrini as the running back. Tufts desperate for some points here on this drive. Can't go down more than 21 in the first half. Carroll will take the snap. He drops back looking at pass. Looking deep, has a man, overshot him a little bit. And that's what Tufts needs to be doing. That's the best part of their offense. He had a man open. It was Brendan Dolan. Uh, Carroll a little off. But now you see Tufts has put themselves in a position where they need to hit the long ball if they want to get back into this game. They know they can't run the ball with, with any efficiency. And the short passes really aren't doing anything. So Hamilton in a spot of control right now. Tufts forcing themselves to get back in the game with the long ball. For sure. you got to like the play call there. Being a little bit aggressive. Not sitting back and letting this deficit get to you. Carroll looking to pass again, fires one out to Pedrini. Pedrini catches it, and he's out to about the 39-yard line. That's where be, he'll be marked out of bounds. So we'll set up a third and four for the Jumbos at their 39. This is an important conversion here for Tufts, but we got to think, now if they do not get this, obviously it depends on how, how many yards they do get on this play, but do you consider going for it on fourth down? You have to think that Sabetti would at least consider it, given the way this game has gone so far. Carroll looking to throw, fires, caught by Roach. Roach has got a little bit of room, and he's out to the 45 of the Continentals. And finally, Roach gets on the stat sheet. He was targeted once on the long ball. It was a good breakup on the play by Christian Snell. Here they target him. He's got the first down. Big play now. First time they're in opponent territory, and we'll see if they can string together a few more plays to get into the end zone, or at least put up some points. That was the biggest gainer for the Jumbo so far today. Carroll takes the snap. He's looking to pass again. Got a little bit of pressure, lets it go. Looking for Roach. Roach with a catch and a touchdown. What a catch by Frank Roach. What a play there. Carroll felt the pressure immediately, just lofted it up. Frank Roach found it, got into the end zone. What a play there and a huge one at that as it gets Tufts on the board. And that is exactly what the Jumbos needed in this drive. As you mentioned, Jacob Carroll put it up there and said, here, you do the job, Frank Roach, and he did. What a grab there for the jumbo touchdown. That's super important, having trust in your receiver, especially down this much this early in a game. We'll see if the Tufts defense can build on the momentum as the extra point is good. Al Swanger puts it through. Last week's NESCAC Special Teams Player of the Week. So the lead, is, the deficit is a little bit more manageable now for the jumbos. Little bit of energy back on that sideline. So after what, after what was probably the worst start they could have imagined in the first quarter and the beginning of the second quarter, they got maybe the best drive imaginable here. Quick, quick, uh, they get, got a third down, quick play to Roach, and then a quick touchdown for 48 yards. And Correct Tufts me is if on I'm the board. mistaken, but no running plays in that drive. No running plays. And look what happened. Look the what touchdown. Happened. So now the Jumbo defense will be given a spot to make their mark here obviously pending a special teams play the jumbos will put the continentals in the worst field position they've seen today and the defense will look to get the ball back to that offense after that quick strike to roach ends in the end zone well, this could be a huge momentum swing the one thing you got to consider though is that the tough defense has been out on the field a lot it was a quick turnaround on that last drive only about a minute for the tough drive so we'll see if that has any effect the uh, fatigue on the tough sideline. Al Swanger kicks it deep into the end zone. That will be taken for a touchback. Good kick there. So the Jumbo defense will come out 
looking for a stop. Well, we'll see now deep in their own or deeper in their own territory than they have been. Does Hamilton stick with the same plan? Are they looking to throw a little bit more? I expect them to continue to run the ball down Tufts' throat. See if that doesn't work. Still in a position of control here, up 14. The defenses look solid except for that last drive. We'll see though. I mean, if you're on that Hamilton sideline, how can you go away from that the run game that looks so promising so I, far? I really don't think you can. At least on this drive, you got to continue with it. Dre takes the snap. He gives Kagan. Kagan's got a little bit of room, and he's wrestled down. Big tackle there by Jovan Nanadovic. Nanadovic had Kagan airborne before wrestling him down he to did. the ground. It was also a good play by Tyler Scales to get into the backfield. It was a combination of Scales and Nanadovic to bring down Kagan. Good play there, and that's what Tufts needs right now. Now you see the offense has gotten to work. They've done some things, scored a touchdown, put some points up on the board. We'll see if Tufts' defense can now st step up their game. So that will go for a loss of one. Kenny Gray in the gun. Kagan in the back again to his left. Gray looking to pass, dropping back, looking deep. He's got him. And he's got him. Man, that ball is caught there by the tight end, Mark Horrigan. Horrigan leaping there, making a good grab, deflating for the Jumbos. And, you know, it was a good play. You're expecting the run again from Hamilton. Uh, the secondary wasn't really ready. The freshman Mike Howard again, not the, the prime candidate for catching a ball there, but he got it. And uh, Hamilton moving the chains. Kenny Gray again in the gun. Takes the snap. This time the give is to Kagan. Kagan not much room to go. And he will be brought down at the Jumbo 48. It's a good play by the Tufts defensive, defensive front. He didn't really have anywhere to go, but Kagan pow so powerfully just pushes his way through for a gain of about two or three. So Hamilton in Jumbo territory once again. Makes every drive this today ending in Jumbo territory. Tufts' defense looks very, very shaky thus far. They had the first drive, and ever since then, Hamilton's just been able to do whatever they want. Kenny Gray with a give to Kagan. Kagan brought down at the 46. Well, here's a huge play coming up. It's third and five. Your team's just put up points on the board. You know, it's probable that they're going to go with the pass here. Kenny Gray's been able to been able to connect a lot over, through the air. Um, and if Tufts can put a stop together here and get the ball back, it could be a whole brand new ball game. Yep, important for the Jumbos to get some good pass rush here. As we mentioned, they've struggled putting pressure on the quarterbacks. Not many sacks this year. I believe the number is six. Or ten, ten. I believe the number is ten. I believe it is ten. Kenny Gray dropping back, looking There's to pass. Pressure. Nanadovic with pressure. Gray cannot escape. He's brought down there by Oparje. Uzochi Oparje there with the stop. It was a great play there. They brought the pressure. Hamilton, the, the pocket collapsed. Nothing Gray could do. It's exactly what Tufts needed. A big stop there as they get, I believe, now their 11th sack of the year. Oparje, big play there as it looks like Kenny Gray could escape. And he wrestled him down to the ground. So that will force a punt. Kenny Gray remains on as the punter. Oh, and he's brought down by the legs. John Andre lets that bounce, and it will go out of bounds at about the 14. Interesting. We don't see uh, many quarterbacks also acting as the team punter. It is interesting. Uh, we've seen that in the NFL a little bit. you got Chad Ochocinco kicking extra points. A lot of <laughs> position players now. Jeff Heath, the backup kicker for the Cowboys, the set starting safety. So that's the second punch of the day for Kenny Gray and the second time he's pinned the Jumbos within their own 20. Yeah, the special teams has really favored Hamilton. We'll see if Tufts can do anything with this poor field position, but it was incredibly important to get that stop, get some momentum going for Tufts, or keep the momentum going for Tufts as well, get some confidence back in this defense. So Carroll's in the gun here, taking the snap, looking to pass again. Got room down the middle, looking for Armstrong. 50-50 ball, broken up and falling to the turf, incomplete. Justin Lay with the pass break up there. It was good coverage there. Armstrong had him for a second, but Carroll underthrew the ball a little bit. Not really much he could do, uh, but it was a tough ball. Lucky to not be intercepted there. Look at this aggressive offense by the Jumbo so far. An aerial attack the past two drives. It most certainly has been, and it's been tough because on the one hand, you want to establish the run game, but it just hasn't really been there. 
So at what point do you just go to the pass that they did it last drive, score a touchdown, we'll see if they continue in here. Carroll takes the snap, looking to pass yet again, firing high. That looks like pass interference. And it's going to be pass interference. Frank Roach was knocked there. The Jumbos may have gotten away with one because that will likely be an automatic first down. Definitely not one they would have picked up on that little four-yard in route. Right. It was Mike, it was, uh, Mike Cairns, who I believe will get called on the pass interference, number 32. Pass interference is the call. So that will be a jumbo first down. That was a good break there. For Tufts, like you said, only would have been a three- or four-yard gain for Roach. Yeah, that likely would have brought up a third and six or so. Now the Jumbos first and ten on their own 19. Carroll in the gun. Pedrini to his right. Looking to pass. Look at Armstrong Firing. right there. Armstrong got it. Not much gain. About three. That's the OJ Armstrong game. Catching those short, short passes. The ever, ever sure hands of OJ Armstrong. Absolutely. They, they're bringing Woodson back in. But Armstrong really hasn't done much this game. That's only a second catch. And you could see it, he's only going, like you said, only going short, trying to get something done, but trying to get some yardage in the process, as well as get some confidence back into the hands of O.J. Armstrong. Yeah, he's very elusive in the space for sure. He's lined up wide right here. Single coverage. Woodson with the give. Nope, he takes it himself. And not much down there. after a short gain. And that's the issue. Hamilton's just not giving in on the run. You can bring Woodson in, but it's more than likely that the run the ball on that play. Hamilton knows that, and it's not much of a gain. Jacob Carroll back out there for this third and seven snap. It's a big play here with the, with the Tufts punter not doing as well as he should thus far in the game. Tyler Johnson the back to his right. Carroll rolling out to his right, looking to throw. Now maybe not looking to run, there. looking to throw, and he's going to be brought down by the helmet. Good tackle there for the Hamilton Continentals. Alex Street was there as was Luca Katz. So the Jumbos caught a break, were not really able to do much with it, and we'll give the ball back to the Continentals again in short order. It's about seven minutes left in this first half. And we'll see how good this punt is because given Hamilton, good field position again could be lethal for this Tufts defense. Patrick Walsh, the punter again. Walsh punts, nearly blocked, but not. End over end, and that will be caught at the 40-yard line. Fair catch there. That was a pretty good punt there. He's bounced back from that earlier three-yard boot. Patrick Walsh getting some confidence back, and we'll see if Tufts, if the Tufts defense can stop Hamilton this time again. Yep, big task here. Another short field for Hamilton. You also have to remember that Hamilton will get the ball back to begin the second half. So Very going important. into the halftime break, up 21, or at this point 14, but if they put up another touchdown here, up 21, um, it could be really, really, really big uh, for Tufts to get another touchdown before the end of the half. Kenny Gray in the gun, takes the snap, they give it to Kagan. Kagan bounces outside and eventually brought down. Yeah, that was a good play by Kagan. And that's a matchup we've seen thus far and we will continue to see throughout the day. It's, the, it's Kagan and the, and the rushing attack against the Natovich, who almost brought him down an open field. It would have been a great tackle. Just let him escape for a few more yards, but overall still a great solo effort. Yeah, that was Tega Egbiri with the tackle oh, there. In the excuse end. me, not Natovich. Number nine and eight look the same from up here. Kenny Gray in the shotgun again. We've seen a lot of shotgun runs. We have for both offenses. Yes, fakes to give this time. Little shuttle pass out wide and brought down by a whole host of jumbos is number 80, the tight end, Eddie Allen. Yeah, and he hasn't, he hasn't seen the stat sheet up until now. Eddie Allen has been good this season, not one of the main targets on this offense. They're really known for their running attack and their wide receiver usage, not only the tight ends, but we'll see, as it was also earlier, that Mike Howergan got a, got a uh, target and a completion for over 20 yards. Yeah, the tight ends in this offense are often tasked mostly with the run blocking yes. assignments. That was a little receiving look there, trying to catch the Jumbos off, off, off and they couldn't. Big play here. Dropping Nanovich. back the pass is great. Looking deep, got a man, and hauled in, still going there. 
Good catch made by Christian Donahoe. Yeah, it was a great throw by Kenny Gray. And you know what? Hamilton's offense, I'm telling you, they look dangerous right now. It's a combination of the Tufts offense looking, uh, Tufts, excuse me, Tufts defense looking shaky. But Kenny Gray has looked good throwing the ball as well as running. And Hamilton is inside the 15. Donahoe had two defenders surrounding him. And Gray dropped it in the spot that only he could get it. Really nice throw there by Kenny Gray. Donahoe coming into this game leading the team in receptions with 20 to go along with 251 yards. David Kagan gets a gain of about three or four on that first down carry. And that was a huge play. Instead of it being fourth and five and Tufts getting the ball back, they're now inside the 15, knocking on the doorstep of putting up more points. With Sam Thoreen possibly waiting to make it a 17-point game. If need be. That's, we'll that's see. best case scenario right now for Tufts. Now the Jumbo, now the Continentals have two backs, both Kagan and Park in the game. Park's actually split out to the left as a receiver. Maybe watch him try and get in the motion. We'll see. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. There he goes across the formation. He'll take that carry there. And brought down. Looks like Greg Holt got him by the feet. And then he was brought down by a bunch of other jumbos. And he's at about the nine by the time he falls, so that will set up a third Veteran and four. play from Greg Holt. He sees the two running back set, sees Park in motion, and he re realizes, you know, he's probably going to get the ball, uh, gets past the offensive line and tackles him for a gain of about two. So a third and four here. For the Continentals. We've seen a lot of third down passing. The Jumbo's pass defense has to be ready here. Look for a short slant or something like that. So again is Kenny Gray and overshot no his man. Big stop there for Tufts. Although it looks like Hamilton will still be able to put points up on the board, but three is a whole lot different from seven. Yes, and gives the Jumbos 327 left on the clock. Sam Thoreen, as we mentioned, has not missed a field goal yet this year. We'll see if the announcer jinx is in effect here. But he has yet to miss a field goal, eight of eight on the year. Snap is good, Thoreen's kick is up, and it is good. That one looked like it could have been good from 50. That's a powerful boot right there. So the Hamilton lead is up to 24 to seven. Tufts offense coming back on the field now. So they've had one drive that's worked very well and four that have not, you could say. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do here. Will they try and throw the ball? Will, will they try and establish the runner with this late time left in the first half? Will they just try and throw the ball? You don't want to try and go two, or obviously you don't want to go three and out quickly, but you have to keep in mind that Hamilton does have time if you go three and out quickly or if you turn the ball over to do something as well as getting the ball back at the beginning of the second half. You're right, it's that double-edged sword type of deal. Uh, the Jumbos want to be aggressive, down 17, obviously, with that good passing attack of theirs, three timeouts, 325 on the clock, so plenty of time to move the ball down the field and score, but at the same time, you don't want three incomplete passes and giving Hamilton the same opportunity. Absolutely. Tyler Johnson back, had a made a uh, nice, nice few moves, got out to about the 32 last return. Thoreen's kick is a deep one. Johnson will get it at the three yard line. Looking to bring it out here. And he is stood up at the 19 yard line. Great coverage there from Hamilton. They learned from the last mistake. And they've had great special teams play so far with the punting, as well as the, uh, the downing and the downfield coverage on those punts, as well as the kickoffs. And for Tufts, it's been drive after drive starting, in poor field, starting with poor field position. You're right, I mean, Special teams, part of the game that's always overlooked, but has played an important part in this 17-point continental lead thus far. Absolutely has. Turning point of the game was the fumble. Carroll gives to Padrini here. Padrini keeps churning the legs, and he'll be out to the 25-yard line, gain of six. And that's what's been missing from the Tufts offense. Padrini can do that. He's strong, he's quick, and he's powerful. He can get into those, he can fit into those holes, and he picks up six right there. Yeah, he was met after a gain of about two, kept moving those legs, able to pick up four more. This snap is low, Carroll handles it, hands to Pedrini. Pedrini, not as much luck there, but he'll pick up about three. So set up a third and one, and an interesting one at that. 
And it's interesting, they have gone to the run. I mean, you saw the, the, the first one worked, that one worked as well. It's going to be third and very, very short. But if they can get that off, if they can get that rushing attack going, this could be a whole new offense for Tufts. You have to think that they may go to the run again here, and if they pick it up, then they go aggressive. But no, Carroll's going to pass, looking nearly intercepted, but falls to the turf, turf unharmfully. Sam Bowen there breaking it up to safety. And here's the issue. It was a quick three and out, and now Hamilton gets the ball back with a chance to put up even more points before the half. Unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, when the Jumbos went with the run on first and second, Third and one felt like a running it down. It really did. Jay Savetti disagreed. And the Jumbos will be forced to give it back to the Continentals, who will have another another chance to score with 2.24 left and three timeouts. And it was a dangerous pass. It was a dangerous pass from Carroll, almost intercepted. Yeah, Bowen had two hands on that. Walsh with a good, a good punt point. there. They received at the 20, moving backwards. And the punt coverage is pretty good for the Jumbos. So the Continentals will start their drive at the 27-yard line. A few missed tackles. It was a good job there. Sam Robinson, the receiver who had the touchdown earlier, the first one of the game, with a nice little return there. It's vital for Tufts not to allow Hamilton to put up more points. You cannot go down. We cannot go into the half down any more than 17, especially when you do not get the ball back to begin the half, to the, begin the second half. We'll see what Tufts can do. Yep, the Jumbos just trying to stay firm here, not let the Continentals get more points on the board. As you mentioned, Kenny Gray taking the snap. They're being aggressive. Little screen pass there. Kagan catches it, and there's plenty of room for him to go, and he'll eventually be brought down at about the first down marker. Kagan so strong, just fighting off tackle after tackle. It was good blocking there as we passed two minutes. Stephen Timmons finally with the tackle for the Jumbos. Good little scheme there. The Time Jumbos the did not look like they were expecting this screen. And with Kenny Gray being able to connect on so many of his passes, it's tough, it kept the tough spot there, Park. See. But with, uh, with Kenny Gray being able to complete as many passes as he has, it's kept the tough defense on their heels because every time you expect the run, you can get burned with the pass, and you can't expect the pass against this run-heavy off, uh, run offense. Yeah, Kenny Gray with a good half so far, 10 of 15 in the air, 125 yards, two touchdowns. Now, if you look at the Hamilton rushing numbers, Joe Park, seven carries, 31 yards, 4.4 per. David Kagan, eight carries, 23 yards, 2.9 per. Wouldn't suggest what we've seen so far. This is another one complete at the park. Good and then he brought there. down there. Good tackle made by Tyler Scales, the linebacker. Tyler Scales is the second nice play tackle for a loss there. But no, I agree. I mean, you look at this Hamilton offense, they've worked quickly and efficiently. Um, they don't need a lot of plays. They don't need, a, you know, they've definitely had the ball working on both sides of the offense uh, with both rushing and the passing attacks. Um, but certainly not dominating through the ground as we were expecting of them. Yeah, but it's just, it's felt like these gains have had more of an impact than the numbers suggest. They've been deflating, and the, the Hamilton offense has produced big runs on big plays. It has. You've looked at, Tufts has gotten it down to a few big third downs. They had the sack on one of them, but other than that, Hamilton's been converting. They've been going down the field uh, with long pa longer passer plays, passing plays than they have for most of the season. Um, and it's a whole new confidence in this offense that we just haven't seen before, uh, prior, to this, prior to last week's Amherst comeback. Yes, the Continentals 50% on third downs compared to the Jumbos only 33%. That's definitely a number that has stood out so far watching this game. Kenny Gray again in the shotgun to receive the snap. Empty set here in the backfield on this third and 14. He's dropping back, pressure surrounding him. Nanadovic chasing him. Gray fires downfield. He's got a man. Holden, bobbled and Holden. Kristen Donahoe. Wow. What a play there. Kenny Gray felt the pressure. He escaped the pocket on the run, fired a dime downfield. Christian Donahoe with the catch. Great play on all sides of the on all sides there from Hamilton. Heck of a throw made by Gray. Really, really great throw. And a good route run by Donahoe, not giving up. Good coverage for a lot of the play by Brandon Jones, but eventually just too much time for 
Kenny Gray, and he finds a man downfield. And that's been the story today. Hamilton, when they can get both parts of their offense working, they're a dangerous team to play. You obviously know the rushing attack is there, and when the, when the passing attack is there, this offense is scary. Not 12 for 17 for 175 yards and two touchdowns for Kenny Gray in the first half. That is not a line the Jumbos were expecting and definitely not hoping to see from Kenny Gray in the first half of this game. They're knocking on the door. Still a minute and 21 left. Definitely enough time to put up some points and go into this halftime lead up more than 17. So it will be a Continental first and 10 at the Jumbo 11. Now with 1.21 to go in the first half, Gray takes the snap to give it to Kagan. Kagan up the middle and brought down at the nine. It's a good play there to limit. Hamilton really not working against the clock right now. You got a minute and 10 to go. They're at the nine yard line. Not trying to give Tufts any more time to try and pull anything at the very end of the half. Sorry, Quinn Fay with the tackle there. Wouldn't surprise me to see Hamilton go with the run again right now. Still have two timeouts left and then go for a pass on third down if they don't pick it up. Gray in the gun, looking to pass out wide and he's got who else but Christian Donahoe. Donahoe with a touchdown. He had the big play to set up this little touchdown there and he finishes it off himself and the Jumbos trailing 30 to seven pending point after. What a first half it's been for Kenny Gray now surpassing 180 yards with three touchdowns. And, you know, he's, he's looked great. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting him to look as well, as, as, as good as he has uh, looking downfield. Thorian back for the extra point, and that will be up and good. So 31-7. to seven. The Hamilton Continentals lead the Tufts Jumbos here with 46 seconds to go in the first half. As you mentioned, Kenny Gray 183 yards and three touchdowns. Christian Donahoe already over 100 yards in this first half receiving. It's been the Gray and Donahoe show here at the Ellis Oval Stadium. Yeah, three different receivers, the three leading receivers for the Continentals, all with touchdown receptions so far. And the Jumbos really with no answer for this Continentals offense that has amassed around 250 yards in this first half. We'll see what adjustments they can make at the half, but at this point, there's got to be some serious turnaround if they want to have any shot in this game. Tufts' offense alone doesn't look capable of putting up 31 points, so it'll be on both sides of the ball to step up their play uh, tremendously in the second half if they want to come out of this game with a win or at least uh, a competitive game. Thorin back to kick again. Johnson again, the deep man. Thorin's kick is a squib, and it will be received at the 26 and brought out to the 34. So the Continentals not wanting to put the hands in Tyler Johnson, not wanting to risk a big return. A little yeah, bit of extracurricular activities out there. Tough player down is Andrew Del Bracco. We'll see. You, you think Tufts is just going to run the ball, try and take it to the half and see what they can do, or you, you think they're going to try and put up points here? You know, 41 seconds on their own 35. If it's me, I'm taking a shot or two. Um, again, you got to be careful with the football. Right, of course. So... You gotta, if, you're, if you're going to throw the ball deep, you have to tell quarterback Jacob Carroll, if you don't see it, take the sack, right? Absolutely. Because there's not much harm in taking the sack here. You've got to hold on to the football for sure. But down 24, kicking away to start the second half, you've got to right. think that Savetti's at least considering being aggressive here. Right. You're right. There's no harm in throwing the ball away or taking a sack. You know, Hamilton isn't looking to put up more points. As Del Bracco is up. He's not, they're not looking to put up more points. They're obviously very content going into the half up 24 on the road in a huge matchup here in the NESCAC. Um, but for Tufts, it's time to start taking some risks. Uh, they haven't really been doing much 
Um, maybe, you know, in the second half, looking to start going for fourth downs, um, but doing anything really to get back in this game. And that starts with throwing the ball downfield here. All right, so they will start this drive at their 34. Jacob Carroll, the quarterback, empty backfield. Start this play. Looks like they are trying to take a shot downfield. Yep, this, this formation would definitely suge suggest that. Carroll dropping back and fires out wide, not downfield. OJ Armstrong looking for him. We have Incomplete. a flag. I believe it'll be holding. And there it is. So now maybe you don't try and take your shot anymore as it will right. be a first and 20 now, I mean, likely. The, the pressure got home there from the Hamilton defensive line. All they did was try and just check it down about a few yards in front of the offensive line. Yeah, force that quick throw. So now maybe you go with the play like a screen, something. Probably see if he can do anything, and if not, just fold it in and take the 24-point deficit at the half. So first and 20 at the jumbo 24. And that is looking like a screen package over here. Four receivers on the right side of the ball. Carroll takes the snap. And there's the screen. Back. Fires a screen out wide to Roach. Roach has got a little bit of room to run. We got there's going to be a, a holding It's going to be on Brendan there. Dolan, and I'll back him up even more. Yep, so it looked promising. He, Roach got out of bounds at about the 40, but it was spried by an illegal block there by Brendan Dolan. So the Jumbos will be backed up even further. And, you know, we were wondering whether that touchdown, that 46-yard touchdown to Frank Roach was going to be a momentum shifter, and it really hasn't been. Tufts got the defensive stop afterwards, but their offense couldn't do anything. Gave the ball right back to Hamilton, who put more points on the board. And at this point, it keeps getting worse for Tufts. We'll see if the second half has anything different. So the Jumbos will now be faced with a first and 23. With 29 seconds left. Going to be a little bit tough to score here. You can say that again. <laughs> Carroll, again in the shotgun. A little hold up here on the play. Referees making sure everybody's set. Carroll takes the snap. Still looking to pass deep. Looking for Armstrong, and that one's picked off again. And it is returned. Got a little bit of room to run. The Jumbo's got to make sure they make a tackle here. And O.J. Armstrong will wrestle him down, but not before Justin Lay got a little bit of ground back. Carroll looking to be aggressive. Threw it into Lay's hands. And I believe there's a flag down the far side of the field. We'll see if that gets picked up or if that, if there is an impact on the play. But either way, now you have to worry about if you're Tufts, them getting in the field goal position. Yeah, 15 seconds left, but two, With two timeouts, timeouts for yeah. Hamilton. And it's been, a, it's been a show put on here by the secondary for Hamilton. Justin Lay and Sam Bone, the two safeties. Sam Bone was very close to an interception. Justin Lay has made a few nice plays. Obviously, he has the interception right there. And Tufts really not able to do anything on offense. And this is what you were afraid of. Like you said, Noah, no harm in taking a sack. Instead, he tries to make a play and he gets burned. And Hamilton possibly trying to put up an extra three, if not more points, here in the first half. So three first half turnovers for the Jumbos. Really not putting themselves in a position to win. And the personal foul there will actually put the... Continentals in what seems like already field goal range. They'll start this drive at the 17. Absolutely field goal range. 34 yarder for Sam Thorin. He's 9 for 9 now in the season. Maybe they'll take a shot into the end zone. If not, run it, call a timeout, and take the field goal. Gray looking to pass here, so they're showing no mercy. Maybe he takes a shot to the end zone. He does. Throwing, looking for Robinson. Oh, and that's nearly, intercepted. Oh, I incomplete. Think he's out of bounds, but nearly picked off. Good play on the ball there for the Jumbos. That was Michael Maghetto. Good play on the ball there. I thought he got a foot down. Ref didn't agree. He had a little bit of a better view than I did. Ghetto making a good play there, not letting Robinson get a touchdown. It would have been a second of the game. So eight seconds left now. We'll see if the Continentals send out the kicking crew or not. Only have eight seconds. I think they have enough time to, to run a quick run play, get down, and then kick a field goal. Gray looking to Instead throw. Instead they're going to the end zone. Fires. Another one nearly intercepted. That one was Miles Ship breaking it up. Just a second left on the clock. Yeah. Interesting play the call there. I, I, I was looking for the, uh, for the run that'll get him a few extra yards. 
make this field goal a little bit easier. But I guess either way, going up 38 at the 7 at the half, they were going for the gauntlet there. Um, and they'll try the field goal here. So Thorin will try and make this a 27-point game. This will be the last play of the half. Throwing a penalty. 34-yarder. Thorin kicks it, and it is good. So, going into the end of the first half, the Hamilton Continentals lead the Tufts Jumbos 34-7. to It's Just been a dominating first half for Hamilton. We'll see what adjustments Tufts can make. Tufts can make, but this game already looking a little bit out of reach. Barring a miracle here as Hamilton gets the ball back to begin the second half. We'll be back with you after the end of halftime. Once again, the Jumbos trail the Hamilton Continentals 34-7 here at Ellis Oval.
Welcome back to Ellis Oval as we are here for the Tufts Jumbos versus Hamilton Continentals football game. So far, it's been one dominated by the Continentals as they're up 34 to 7 at the half. Well, it was a rough first half for Tufts. Both first pose both possessions uh, for both teams to start the game looked pretty similar going three and out, but it was a fumble uh, on the snap. Uh, Trevon Woodson couldn't handle it, and they fumbled. Uh, Hamilton got the ball at the 10-yard line, put it in for six, uh, and since then it's been all Hamilton. We'll see if the momentum can change, but the Continentals will get the ball to begin the second half. Tufts has a lot of work to do to put this one, or to make this one a close game. Yeah, three turnovers for the Jumbo's offense so far, and just an aerial attack by Hamilton quarterback Kenny Gray. He's thrown for three touchdowns already in this one. Yeah, he's had a phenomenal first half. We knew Hamilton was going to be able to come out here and uh, run the ball down Tufts' throw. What we were not anticipating was the passing attack that Hamilton has. Kenny Gray, 183 yards and three touchdowns already just in that first half. So Matt Alswanger will kick us off into the second half here. The Jumbos hoping to get something going. Robinson deep to receive for Hamilton. He brings it out across the 20. Shaken up there and brought down at the 21. That was a pretty good run back there from Robinson. So, you know, Tufts obviously down 27, facing a huge mountain here. First, most important thing, though, is just get a stop. Just get out there. Obviously, you want to force a turnover to get back in this game, but you don't want to leave yourself susceptible to big plays. Just get a stop. Hope your offense can do something. Yeah, at this point, this is really a pride thing for this Jumbo's defense. They had a rough first half. They don't want – they let up 34 points. They want to come out here, put their best foot forward to begin the second half. Kenny Gray throws to start. Robinson with a catch. He's got room to run across the 30. And out to the – whoa, brought down on the Jumbo sideline at the 34. O.J. Armstrong with an athletic play to avoid getting hit in the legs by Sam Robinson. Yeah, there. It, was, it was a physical tackle, but a well-designed play there for Hamilton. Sam Robinson was a three-wide receiver set on the right side of the field. Sam Robinson just snuck. He was in the middle. He just snuck uh, underneath, caught a pass, good blocking, and then pick up a first down. Hamilton picking off right where they left off. Hamilton out to the 34-yard line. Kenny Gray takes the snap to give it to Joe Park here. Joe Park to the right, rumbles back into the left, and brought down after a gain of two or three at the 38-yard line. Joe Park, speaking of picking up right where they left off, uh, having a great game last week against Amherst, now with eight rushes for about 34 yards. Uh, he's had a good one here, leading the team in rushing yards. Uh, David Kagan being the second uh, of the two-headed monster that Hamilton possesses. Yeah, it's tough to bring him down. Park is a little bit more of a speed guy. Kagan a little bit more between the tackles. Both of them efficient in this, their rushing attack versus the Tufts defense here. They give us to Park again. Park's got a first down and more out to the 48-yard line before he's brought down. Yeah, that was a good play there. Park had a hole. Good job by the offensive line. And that's been a huge thing for the offensive line of Hamilton. They've been making holes all day and even when they haven't been, the strength of Kagan and the speed of Park have been able to repel them into the small holes and it's another first down for Hamilton. Yeah, Park just burst through that hole on that run. You're right there and he's he's been really good today. He's been taking what's given to him and making a little bit more. You've seen a couple of spin moves, breaking some tackles. Kenny Gray fakes the throw and releases it that's going to be a fumble back to the 38-yard line. Yeah, I think, he was, little play. I think he was looking on the left side to Christian Donahue, Donahue, who had four catches for 106 yards. He saw it was a good coverage, could have been intercepted. He decided to tuck it a little too late, fumble the ball. No harm as they're still up 27, but it's a loss of a lot, and it'll be second and long. Yep, that will bring him back to the 39-yard line here for a second and 19. Gray again in the gun. Park lead back to his left. Robinson in motion. He throws out to Robinson, and that's a fumble. And it's going to roll out of bounds. The throw was backwards to Robinson, making it, it a fumble and not an incomplete pass. So another setback for this Hamilton offense uh, will bring them back to the 32-yard line. So after picking up two first downs, Hamilton... And Hamilton's offense install, uh, stalling here after two poor plays, two fumbles, um, and it'll be third and long. Fumble. 
A little bit more conservative look from this Tufts defense here. So the defensive back setting a little bit further. Brandon Jones back past the 40. Kenny Gray looking to pass. Got a little bit of time. Scrambling now. A little bit of pressure on him. Out Put to his right. Away. Chased by Ninotovic. Ninotovic chases him to the sideline. And Gray just flicks it out of bounds. Yeah, smart play. They already lost 16 yards on that set of downs. No use in trying to force it downfield. Maybe switch the momentum. Just get it out and get your punt to the ball. And by get the punt to the ball, I mean, I guess just give it to yourself. Kenny Gray stand out there to punt. Yeah, it's quite the phenomenon. He took the biggest hit he's taken all day on the last punt. Wow. So a good defensive possession for the Jumbos. Uh, a little bit of positives there. John Andre back to receive this punt. Maybe he can make something happen. Well, like I said, the first step was stopping them on that down, that set of downs. And that's what they did. Now it's time for the offense to try and do something. Good over, end over, end There's a punt. flag down. All right, so it's a little unconventional to see the quarterback also punt. We've seen some bombs released by Kenny Gray we today. Have. Both by his arm and leg. Both his two previous punts, he'd pinned the Jumbos inside their own 20. This one couldn't quite do so, but a good strong punt regardless. And short return for John Andre. One of, those punts, will start this. one of those punts, they downed him at the one yard line. Yeah, that was a great one. And that was a real momentum shifter in this game as well. That was. It was on that drive that Tufts fumbled. Hamilton put up the first points of the game. Some discussion here with the Hamilton coaching staff regarding a flag down there. It was on Tufts, I believe. They're wondering whether they want to re-kick, but instead they just to gain the, the yardage after the kick. So Jacob Carroll on the offense here will come out starting this drive at the 32-yard line. We'll see if Tufts can do anything. Really weren't able to get the running attack going in the first half. We'll see if they stick with that or if they just go to the air attack. The one drive that they did score was solely passing plays. But for the most part, the Hamilton secondary has been good. Getting their 10th and 11th interceptions of the season. Carroll drops back, looking to pass. Has time, fires downfield, looking for Dolan, and Brendan Dolan comes up with it at the 26 yard line. And there you go, there's your answer. Good, strong throw there by Jabe Carroll. Good route run by Brendan Dolan, and he makes the sliding catch. That was a great play, great throw by Carroll, and that's some momentum right there. We'll see if Tufts can get on the board early here in the second half. And Carroll dropping back, looking to pass again. He fires, looking for him. Roach. Roach has got it, and another touchdown. So the Jumbos, with about as good of a start to the second half as we can imagine, maybe they're not dead yet. That was a good play there. You had Roach doing a little bit of a slant on the outside. He's going to catch it with a little bit of room. He sneaks into the end zone. Great play there. Two plays, two catches, and a touchdown. The second one of the day from Carroll to Roach. Like you said, Noah, maybe there's still some game left to be played. Yeah, big showing so far for Frank Roach. He's been about the only thing that's gone right for this offense today. Absolutely. You've seen O.J. Armstrong be seriously limited, but Roach is getting a lot of targets and a lot of catches. Al Swanger's extra point is up and good, so it is now 34-14 to 40, 34 to 14 Hamilton Continentals. But as, as promising as a, as a start as we can see for the Jumbos in the first four minutes of this half, yeah, you know, that was a great. Those are great possessions, both on defense and offense. Although the defense did look a little shaky the first two uh, first downs, Hamilton kind of shooting themselves in the foot on the last one with the two fumbles. However, still, like you said, a lot of work to be done here. Tufts, if they want to win this game, are going to need to force some turnovers. But at this point, it's just keeping Hamilton's offense off the field. You got to get them when they get the ball, stop them quickly, stop them early, get good field position. That's the only way Tufts is going to be able to get them back into this game. For sure. This needs to be a stop, as you mentioned, for this Tufts defense. A little bit of energy back. That's what a big, those big plays can do for you. Jay Savetti obviously getting into the minds of his players during the half. They come out with new further. Al Swinger back to kick this one. Robinson, a deep man. That's a good deep kick. He received in the end zone. Robinson out to the right, and a bunch of tacklers out there, and he'll be brought down at the 16-yard line. Good special teams play by the Jumbos to force the Continentals to start this one deep in their own territory. 
I believe this will be the worst starting field position that Hamilton has had thus far in the game. It was great downfield. It was great kick return coverage for Tufts. And we'll see if they can, if the momentum can continue and they can get a few stops going. A little bit of energy back on this side of the field. Absolutely. With the jumbo cheering section and the sideline. Well, I mean, it was the, the, it was, nothing was working for Tufts in the first half. The offense, the defense, and the special teams. So far, the offense has looked good. The special teams has looked Kenny good. Gray fires out to Buddington. Buddington catches for a short game. Yeah, you were right. Tough first half for the Jumbos. They could use a little bit of momentum here. That was a little strike from Gray to Buddington, which he catches at the 21, and he's oh, brought down there. Miles Ship with the tackle. It was a good one. Second and five. Looking for the run here. This run is to Park. Good call, Brandon. And Park keeps moving, but is brought down at the 23-yard line. So it'll be a third and three Big for third. the Hamilton Continentals. Big third down here. It looked like they had Park in the backfield, but he's able to get away and get a pick up about a yard. And we'll see what they do here on third down. It's a big one. Tufts trying to get their defense off the field and their offense back on as quickly as possible to get back into this one. Kenny Gray back in the shotgun for this third and three snap. Park the running back to his right. The give is to Park. Park is met Good play. and he is brought down. Big stop there by the Jumbos. The tough defensive front not folding. It was a great play there. They got to him quickly. And unlike the last play, they tackle him at first contact. Great play there. And it'll be fourth down. Looked like a whole host of Jumbos, including Nanadovic, Timmins, and Holt were in on that stop. Defensive back Cam O'Brien was also there making a nice play. So it'll be a punt here. John Andre back deep. Only five and a half minutes elapsed so far. So if Tufts can get a quick touchdown, Punch they can get back into this Gray. one. Excuse me, that's not, that is not Andre back deep. And that one will be down at the 39-yard line. I think they'll spot it about the 41. So Tufts now with some good field position, and all of a sudden it's a different second half. It is, it is. A little bit of momentum back on the Jumbo side, and gosh knows they can use it. That was Borelli back to return, I'm sorry. We'll see how much those late points added by Hamilton at the end of the first half have an impact, because Tufts obviously trying to get back into this when they look like they have new life here in the second half, but those that extra touchdown and field goal that were added by the Continentals at the end make this one even more out of reach. For Tufts, even though they look prom, even this first half has the second half has looked promising for them thus far. So they start this drive at their own 41. Pretty good for field position. Carroll looking to pass. He goes deep. He's, oh, he's got, got a him. man, oh. and he overshot him. Looking for Brendan Dolan, who was alone. If Carroll could have put that ball on him, Dolan was walking into the end zone. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, it was a great play design there. Dolan just went long. The safeties were drawn away uh, by the tight end, Jack Donahue. Carroll just missed. It was a play we saw. It was similar to one we saw in the first half uh, to put the Jumbos, or excuse me, earlier in the second half on the first drive where Dolan caught it down the middle of the field, setting up that touchdown to Roach, just unable to uh, convert that time. Found a seam in the middle of the field. Carroll dropping back, looking to pass again. A little bit of pressure. He steps up. He's going to take it himself and leveled at the 45-yard line after a gain of four. Jacob Carroll got knocked down hard, got right back up. He's a tough guy. There was nothing doing. Secondary played well. We had a good play there. Uh, they brought the pressure. Nothing Carrick could do but step up and try and make something on his own. Does a good job getting four there, but it'll be a tough third and six. And a big third and six at that one coming up. So third and six here. Brandon, what type of play are you thinking? You ought to think maybe if they get a couple yards, they go for it on fourth down? I'm thinking they are. I'm thinking they go for something short, try and pick up the first down. I mean, downfield is where they've had most of their success. Um, but it, obviously a passing play. I look for them to go something kind of short to Armstrong. They don't go short. They go deep to Armstrong, and that is nearly intercepted. Falls to the ground. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing. You know, Hamilton's expecting the deep throw on that play. They're, they're, they're keeping their defensive backs back in the secondary, and I feel like something short there would have been able to get them close to the first down, make it a manageable fourth down if they wanted to, or even pick up the first down. Either way, it'll be a punt here for Tufts. If they had picked up a few more yards, I would have said, possibly go for fourth, but fourth and six on your own territory. That could end the game if you don't get it right there. Yeah, Jared Schwartz was on the pass breakup on that play, made a nice play, leaping over O.J. Armstrong to break it up. 
Walsh is back to punt. And low liner. That's going to be received by Robinson at the 13. Robinson's got a little bit of room to run. He rattles out to the 27-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds there. It was there. a good play. It was, a, it was a low punt. Good job by Robinson to evade a few tacklers before getting out of bounds. Good gain there. Yeah, really unfortunate end to that drive for the Jumbos. Had great field position. Had an open look to Dolan. Carroll just missed him, but a really good play call by Savetti. And then Carroll made that good run. You, you, you're right. You would think that you would go with something a little bit more conservative there because right. if you're going, you, in a game where you're down 20, you go for a fourth and two at your own 49. Right. You don't, you don't necessarily go for that fourth and six. Here is yeah, flag talking about down. the pass is Gray. Flag down, probably going to be a hole, but he heaves it downfield. Brandon Jones Good knocks break it up by Jones. down there. Good strong play by Jones. One-on-one -on -one coverage on Puttington who's given them fits all day, but really strong play there by Jones. Good coverage. It is an offensive holding. That is what the flag was. By the way, no, it's interesting to note, Tufts' two touchdown drives, both quick drives that were only passes, followed by three and outs by the Hamilton offense, but Tufts unable to put up points on in the next two drives, in the ensuing drives. It'll be something to see if Hamilton can try and squeeze that momentum back right now, or if Tufts' defense can hold it. The so holding that, doesn't help. Yeah, that's a good call. That will push Hamilton back 10 yards for a first and 20 at their own 22. Yeah, He's Kenny Gray looked to take a deep shot there. Yeah, he did. All right, Gray's in the shotgun again. Kagan in the back to his left. The thing with the first and longs for Hamilton, it throws off the rhythm a little bit. They like running the ball on first down, and here you can see a pass play. Gray fires, that one's batted down. Unable to come up with it are the Jumbos, but that was a dangerous pass thrown by Kenny Gray. It certainly was. And like I said, the way that Hamilton likes to do it on first and second down, they like to go short, either with a run or a quick slant or a screen. And here on second down, or here when it's first and 20, you don't really have the same room. You got to make up double the distance and the same amount of plays. So of course, the amount of rhythm. We saw that last possession, and we saw it here again. Here's second and 20, Gray in the shotgun. Robinson's the motion man. Gray drops back on a little screen to Kagan and a wrestle down by Greg Holt. There's Greg. We were waiting for him to make an impact, and there he is. Great play there from Holt, the leading tackler for this tough defense. If he got by Holt, he had plenty of room to run. Greg Holt made sure that didn't happen. Good, strong tackle for no gain. Third and 20. This defensive line seems to have a little bit of juice, a little dancing from Greg Holt and Joe Von Nanadovic. There we go. They got some confidence back. This will be a huge stop. Look for them to bring a little bit of pressure here. Try and force a turnover on this long third down. Kenny Gray back to pass, looking. Robinson catches it, but well short of the first down. At back to the original line of scrimmage of the 32, and the Continentals will punt. Well, it was a good job for Hamilton. It was tough to pick up the first down. You don't want to switch the momentum by a turnover, by uh, having tough or committing a turnover. They played it smart. I think that was the right call to get back to the line of scrimmage, give themselves a little bit more yardage to work with before booting the ball back to Tufts. Gray back to punt. Slow snap. He handles it. End over end punt to the down. We'll see where they mark that. It looks like it definitely hit a Hamilton player at the 35-yard line. That's where they will mark it down. So, Jumbos, unable to do anything with their good field position on the last drive. Punted it away. Good punt by Walsh. And, and then a good defensive stand by the defense. I'm not saying this game is over, but if the Jumbos don't score on this drive, it would be very detrimental to their chance well, of look, coming back in this game. I mean, it comes down to the fact that they have very few possessions where they can waste. They did it the last time. They have to score on almost all their possessions now and force a few turnovers because there's just simply not enough time left to come down without doing so. Um, but they, are, they do have way more positives in this first, second half thus far. Uh, we'll see if they can keep that going. Carroll dropping back, looking to pass, firing deep, looking for Armstrong. Nearly caught by O.J. Armstrong. That would have been Odell Beckham-esque if he could have hauled that one in. Yeah, it was a great effort by Armstrong, just a little overthrown by Carroll. I like the approach, though, going downfield on first down. The only issue is that now it sets up a second and long. Tough hasn't been great on the run, so you're expecting the pass if you're the Hamilton defense. I look for them to do something short here. 
try and get some yardage at least instead of going for the long ball every time. Hamilton still doing a great job with O.J. Armstrong. Only, I believe, one or two catches on the day. This will set up a second and ten for the Jumbos at the 35. Two catches for five yards for Armstrong. Carroll dropping back, looking to pass. Good protection here. He steps up, fires, Good and play. caught. Good, strong throw to Frank Roche, who hauls it in there at about midfield. On the run, like you said, Noah, very strong throw. Frank Roche having himself a day. That's his fifth catch. Puts him above 100 yards, along with two touchdowns. Yeah, he's a big part of that offense. Look for Armstrong to get involved. They've targeted him a couple of times, too, in a bit of deeper throws than we were looking for. They have. It was a good job to pick up the first down. Puts them right at midfield. We'll see what they can do with this. Carroll looking to throw. Looking for Borelli, and he overshoots him. He did overshoot him. He also put him in a diff difficult position. You had number nine, Sam Bowen, the safety coming in, looking to make a, a hit on Don Borelli. Uh, either way, it'll be second and ten. Yeah, Borelli had a little bit of room in the slot there, but that throw sailed over his head from Carroll. Look for a big shot here. You're at midfield, second down. Yeah, I agree, Noah. I mean, they keep going down with the long ball. I feel like every time they're going to throw it short and they can they continue to surprise me with the long ball. It has worked sometimes, hasn't worked other times. We'll see what they do here. Carroll takes the snap. He drops back. A little bit of pressure. He another fires deep, deep, looking for O.J. Armstrong. A little long. A little long. And, and here's the thing. If the long ball works, then it's great. But, here, but you're also down 20, and you put yourself now on a third and 10 where you have 10 yards to go, even if you want to go for it on fourth down, you need to make it manageable for yourself. You can't be going on a fourth and eight. Um, and the long ball, like I said, if it works great, but you're only, you only put up two touchdowns, I, th I say you got to go short. Um, I mean, we'll see what Tufts does, but I feel like that's the strategy that they have to implement if they want to get back into this game. Yeah, this is a play. I, you're right. If they cross midfield here, they get six yards on this play, you're definitely in a situation where you're going for it on a, thir on a fourth and four. Absolutely. Fourth and ten, a little bit harder to stomach for sure. Carroll looking to pass. Good pressure. He steps up. He's going to be met by some defenders and dragged down at the 49-yard line. So it will be fourth and eight. Yeah, that was a good play by the, uh, by the Hamilton defensive line. Carroll really didn't have any time to do anything, and it looks like the punting unit is coming out. And not too many more possessions Tufts can waste if they want to get back into this one. Not, not a great... Drive there for sure. You know, it's tough. If, if it was a fourth and five, maybe a little less, especially since they'd be further in Hamilton territory, I would suggest going for it. I think this is just too long. Walsh will take the snap. And his punt is a far That's one. That's going to go end through the back of the end zone. Wow. It was a really good punt there from Walsh. Very, However, very strong punt. Very, very strong punt. Probably would have liked to have pinned them down a little. A little further, um, then again, starting at making them start at the 20 is not a bad thing. So 5-16 left in this third quarter. The Jumbos still trail by 20. Have had a positive second half, probably not positive enough. I mean, it's been a good second half compared to the first half. I mean, it's been a Super Bowl performance here from Tufts. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a mountain to climb here to get back into this one. They knew that. They've played well. The defense have played well, but they need an extra effort. Give us a Kagan here. Kagan runs to the outside and met for very little gain. Good strong play there by Miles Ship. Miles Ship and Timmons combined on the tackle there. You know, and it's interesting. If you look at the NESCAC standings, you have three teams of Bowden, Bates, and Kobe that are 0 6. Among the teams with a win coming into today, Hamilton had allowed the most points. So it's interesting to see what they're doing in this tough offense. Coming in with a strong game plan, implementing it well, and here you go, up 20 late in the third. Gray takes the snap to give us to Kagan. Kagan outside to his right. Got a little bit of room. Greg Holt there and Timmons, and they bring him down after a game of two. Right here. So the pursuit of Greg Holt forced him to cut back, and by the time he did that, a bunch of other tough players were there to stop him. Greg Holt not getting the tackle, but making the impact on that play. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that, Brandon. Actually, Hamilton is averaging 37.7 points per game in wins this year as opposed to just 14.7 in losses. So in the games where they've scored big, they fared right. very well, right. which seems obvious, but they do well in these types of shootout games. The Jumbos 
similar type of thing. I think they averaged 32 points per game in the wins. Gray dropping back the pass here. He steps up in the pocket and he's met and brought down there. Strong play made by Stefan Timmons. It was Timmons and Nanadovich on the plane. Nanadovich making more of an impact as this Tufts defense has awoken possibly a bit too late. Either way, it's good to see that going forward. They can kick into that next gear. Yeah, the Jumbos uh, front seven has been really good in this half, causing a lot of pressure, making strong plays against the running game, and that's what they could have used in the first half for sure. Kenny Gray's punt is a good one. Back deep is Andre. Andre gets it at his 33. Andre out past the 35 and tripped up there out to the 38-yard line. So Tufts is, besides, uh, or, excuse me, including their touchdown drive, they've had three drives thus far, all starting at least at the 35 of Hamilton. Scored on the first one and haven't been able to do anything on the other two since then. We'll see what they can do here. Take yeah, I mean, if you score a touchdown here and you go into the fourth quarter down just two possessions, you have a little bit, I mean, you're not in great shape, but you're not, you could be in worse shape. Let's see what Carroll on the offense can do here. Takes the snap, dropping back, looking to pass, plenty of time. Now, not anymore, and he is brought down for a sack. Mike Friedman made his way through the middle, pretty untouched there. At first, it looked like there was a pocket for Carroll. Then Friedman came screaming through the middle, brought Jacob Carroll down for a big sack. Yeah, Carroll, he never had that much of a chance. The offensive line didn't pick up Friedman, uh, and he was able to, like you said, walk in scot-free. Get him to the lock, get him in, uh, get him in the backfield for a sack there. So a big second of 14 here for Tufts. Carroll in the gun. Takes the snap, dropping back, looking to pass. Time looking deep. now, and brought down another sack. Now, another thing with the deep pass is your, your pass protection has to be really good. There was plenty of time for Carroll there, but no men open downfield, and he's forced to take the snap. Absolutely. It was a good play by Alex Street. He's had a heck of a day coming in with, a, with his first sack, but he's had a few big tackles um, throughout the day. But like you said, Noah, now it's third and 21. They put themselves in a tough position. You almost have to go for the long ball here. Um, and, yeah, I mean, the offensive line has held up up to this point. This drive not looking like it so far, though. Yep, Carroll's back in the gun on third and 21. The Hamilton defensive secondary is back, set back, ready to go. And Carroll looking, oh, oh just missed Dolan. I believe Christian Snell got a hand on it. That looked like it could have been a miracle play. Jacob Carroll floated it over the defender, but there was a little pass breakup. It was a good effort. Get but you a replay right here. Yeah, I believe Snell did get a hand on it. Snell just able to get enough on there, or else that's probably a 40-yard gain. I agree. In terms of passing plays, it looks like nothing really doing for Tufts if, if it's not Frank Roach on the other end of the throw. Patrick Walsh to punt again. Walsh with a good one there. That one's going to bounce inside tough bounce. the 40, all the way down to the 28-yard line. So ever since that three-yard punt, from Walsh, he's been pretty solid. If we look at the out-of-town scoreboard, we have two winless teams going at it in the NASCAC. Colby at, on the road, excuse, Colby at home, excuse me, taking on winless Bates, 23-12. to 12. They lead it late in the third. Battle of the two winless teams there. Jumbos really looking at these rushing statistics. You can see how they've been dominated in that in that department. Not able to establish the run at all. Gray fires, fires across the middle and that's caught by Buddington again before the tackle's made by Scales. And yeah, it's really been the Donahoe show thus far for Hamilton, but you have to remember, Buddington was their leading receiving, receiving yards getter going into the game. So it's still, you still gotta focus on both of them as well as Sam Robinson. Buddington a little bit more quiet today, but still with Five receptions for almost 60 yards. We have an injury. Miles Ship shaking up. 
It'll be a big loss. Miles Ship has had it. Has been beat a few times this game, but he's still a starting cornerback. He's played well this season. We'll see if he can get back on the field. So no, it's been an interesting start to the second half. Uh, you know, obviously Tufts had a very porous first half, but they've come out. Their defenses look very solid. Their offenses looked better, but still not great. Um, looking tough for them to get back into this game. But overall, what do you think about the second half? I think that it has been positive yet frustrating for Jay Savetti and this Tufts Jumbo's coaching staff because they see what their team can do, yet they're falling just a little short on a lot of the things. And it's kind of that too little, too late type of thing. Um, they showed that this is, this is a team that they can hang with. Right. And they should have been hanging with in this first half, but they dug themselves a 27-point deficit. Kenny Gray back. Hand off to Joe Park. Joe Park with some yards, about a seven-yard gain to nice, almost midfield. It was a nice, strong run cutting up and down the field. And Joe Park, he really is a strong runner. You, you know, talk about David Kagan. He's the focus going into the game. But Joe Park is just as much ability as David Kagan does. He's two years younger, and he's been really good, really solid these last few games. Yep. He is part of that, that rushing crew that has given tough fits at times today. It absolutely has. Kenny Gray back in the gun again. Park flanking him to his right. Oh, bobble there. Park eludes a tackle and will bring it for a gain. How that play that was gain yards, I have no idea. The snap was bobbled by Gray into the hands of Park, who bobbled it himself and then was able to gain two yards. Yeah, and Park, the concentration to stick with that one as we end the third quarter was phenomenal. Able to make it not only keep a hold of the ball, but able to make, turn it into a positive play. Great job there by Park, who's had a tremendous game. Yeah, really, really good play. I Really, Park saved him from near disaster there. Absolutely. Because that ball could have scored it away, and it could have become a turnover. Hamilton has taken care of the ball all day. No, no turnovers on the offensive end. And... So that's definitely a category that they've beat the Jumbos in. Jumbos with their three turnovers I so mean, far. I mean, you look at the main momentum shifter of this game, and I know I've said this a bunch, but it was the turnover. It was the, the, the fumble, uh, the Woodson fumble that For put sure. Hamilton at the 10-yard line. And something like that, it's still the fourth quarter. Something like that, a fumble there. If Park doesn't hold on to that one and Tufts gets the ball, that could be a quick momentum changer. Not a lot of time left, but we're, we're, uh, crazier things have happened. Crazier things have happened. Kenny Gray going into the half, 183 yards. He has 225 in total. Um, they've really been able to stop the passing attack thus far in the second half. Only 42 passing yards thus far. They have not gotten into the end zone, but Tufts offense has also yet to really produce anything special besides the one touchdown drive. Gray back in the shotgun on the third and one. The give is up the middle, and Park is close. Lunge, second effort should it get was, it for him. I think the second effort got it. Jumbo's had him stood up at the line of scrimmage, and Park just kept driving his feet, and in the end, it would have picked up two effort. and enough for the first. Tremendous second effort. I believe some of the offensive linemen helped push him as well, but Joe Park really putting on a show here in Tufts. You can see that second effort there by Joe Park, able to keep moving the feet, get forward, and pick up that first. Pretty impressive stuff there from the young running back. If Tufts wants to get back into this one, they need to stop, and they need it now. Kenny Gray dropping back, looking across the middle, intercepted! Michael Bugetto with the interception. He crossed the 30, past the 40, and brought down at the 44-yard line. Michael Bugetto giving the Jumbos hope. Well, there you go, and we got a flag for some extracurricular activities going on after the play. Connor Chepnick getting in the face of the quarterback, Gray. Probably not a wise idea with the day that Gray is having, but... A good strong play as you see on your replay there. Good play. I mean, it's exactly what Tufts needed. They needed it to stop the ball right now. It was a little bit of a risky play. I'm surprised Gray threw that ball. It was poorly thrown right at Maghetto. Uh, he's had a great game up to this point. A little sloppy there, especially up 20, beginning in the fourth quarter when the run game has worked. Interesting play call, and we'll see if it burns them. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what Kenny Gray saw there, but the Jumbos will take it. There was also a penalty on Gray after the play. So a little frustration kicks in, and the Jumbos are on the 40 to start this drive. 
So a big play there. And Tufts, obviously, no excuses to not put this one in the end zone. You're down 20. The offense has been moving the ball here in the second half. If you want to get back into this one, you need to score, and you need to score quickly. And an interesting look with Trevon Woodson, the quarterback in the game now. Woodson takes the snap. He's looking to pass. Looking. Now he steps up in the bucket. A little bit of room to run. Past the 35. Squirts out to the 32-yard line. You know, the thing about Woodson, he's just, he can get away so quickly. He's a big guy, and he can throw the ball, but he's so agile. He makes you miss. He had a beautiful nine-yard run earlier in the game, and it's a good seven-yard run here to put Tufts at the least in field goal range. They'll hurry back up to the line. Woodson in the shotgun again. Takes the snap. Dropping back. Looking to pass. Fires out wide. Caught by O.J. Armstrong. O.J. Armstrong's out of bounds at the 27-yard line. A first down for the Jumbos. Well, there's O.J. Armstrong. Woodson's first completion of the day. But Armstrong, that's his first catch that more than doubles his yards. Only his third catch of the day, though. We'll see if they can try and get him more involved. Woodson in the gun. They're at the 25 of the Jumbos. Woodson looking to pass. Short little one to O.J. Armstrong. O.J. Armstrong's got it at the 21. He is brought down there. Woodson left that one a little bit low. Armstrong had to slow down a little bit or else he may have been able to pick up the first. But a completion nonetheless. Yeah, that, that was a good tackle. Armstrong tried to squeeze away from Sam Bowen, but he did a good job keeping him down. Only a gain of three there on the little crossing route. The Jumbo's got to hurry up, and Woodson runs off the field as Carroll comes on. Interesting, as they were just about to get A good few in. series of plays there for Woodson. Got his first completion. Got a good run in there. Two for two with 10 yards was Woodson. Carroll in the eye. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. Roll out to his right. Now pressure comes. He avoids one and cannot avoid the next, and he's brought down for a snack. Jumbo fans are not happy with that play. No, they're not. I mean, the Tufts offensive line, the one that's the one area that they that was positive in the first half, and they've given up three sacks here in the second half. Here you'll see the replay. Little design play, action play, looking for Jacob Carroll to roll out to the right. Saw a man there, was able to make one miss, and then just brought down. The pocket collapsed on him there. So you got to think if you're Tufts and you don't get close to this one, are you going for a field goal or are you just going for it? Down 20. That would keep it a keep it a, would keep it a three possession game. I think you have to try and pick up some yards here and go for it on fourth. Here's Carroll Play again. Action, Pressure again. Firing deep, looking for Roach. What a catch! Frank Roach in the back of the end zone. Somehow hauls it in, and that's a jumbo touchdown. Number three of the day for Frank Roach. That was a great, phenomenal catch by Frank Roach. Third touchdown of the day, as Noah said. It was an interesting play call. They go. With the play action on third and long, the Hamilton defensive line almost got home, but for the second time today, Carroll lobs it up, tr puts trust in the hands of his graduate student, Frank Roach. He's able to come down with his third touchdown grab of the day. Phenomenal it's a clinic catch. put on. Phenomenal catch by Frank Roach, and Matt Alswanger's PAT is good. So the jumbo deficit is now just 13 points, 34 to 21 Continentals, 11.53 to go in this game. Now, we opened, we opened this broadcast by talking about how the Hamilton Continentals came back last week, right. scored 14 points in the last four minutes. Brandon, do you think the Jumbos have a shot at doing the same thing I think thing the today? Jumbos have a shot only because of the defensive turnaround that they've had. You can look at the offense. The offense has had, the offense has had a, uh, a tremendous season, but the defense has struggled at times, and one of those times was in the first half. Look at the second half, and it's been a totally different game. Been a totally different team. They forced the turnover on Kenny Gray, who had been looking phenomenal up to that point. Um, and if they can get a quick stop here, I can see it happening. I think Tufts has a lot of work to still be done, but good work so far. Yeah, they're going to need to keep getting pressure from that defensive line. We mentioned that they're having a strong second half, and if they can force a turnover or, or even just a three and out, they give their offense a chance. Al Swinger about to kick off, and he boots it. Robinson's going to receive it at, in his own end zone. He's going to go out. Oh. He's going to come out with it, and he's got a little bit of room to run. Wow, that looks like it could have been a disastrous type of play for Hamilton to return, and he, Robinson brought it out for a pretty nice well, return. That was a there. really interesting play. I mean, Robinson looked as though it was, the kick was deep, and it was to the side. It looked as though Robinson was going to take a knee. He hesitated, looked like he was going to take a knee again, hesitated once again, and then ended up 
getting farther, getting past the 20, out to past the 25 even, down the sideline. A little breakdown there in the Tufts uh, coverage downfield. I would not be surprised if that is brought up during special teams meetings this week. Absolutely. Looks like the, the special teams unit kind of fell asleep on that one a little bit. And now after the interception, look for Hamilton to run the ball even more. Gray takes the snap. The give is to Park. Park bounces it outside and wrestle down. Good play there. Miles Ship back out on the field. Good to see him back out there. Absolutely. He's been key today and the second half for this offense, or excuse me, for this defense. Still a gain of five. Uh, we'll need Tufts to, to put together a big stop here. Can't waste too much time. Kenny Gray in the shotgun, second and five. They give us to Park. Park, not much room, but he finds some, and he's going to get a first down before Greg Holt and a couple of other jumbos bring him down. And that's what Park has been doing such a good job of. We see Park now becoming the lead back as opposed to Kagan in this game. But Park, he mows he... It's a, run to the le it's a run to the left. He's able to find a hole, cuts back, uh, gets through the hole, and then picks up the first down. Great run by Park, as I feel like I've said many times today. Joe Park now with 15 carries for 65 yards and a touchdown. A good day on the ground for him. And you look at this. You've had David Kagan in the last four years for Hamilton, and now Joe Park stepping up into this role. He's only a sophomore. 72 yards, excuse me. Park only a sophomore. If he can continue this and he can stay healthy, Hamilton offense can be good for years to come. Joe Park with a little bit of room out to the right. Good play made by Stephen Timmons. Stephen Timmons, Tyler Scales also there. It was the whole linebacking core there. Greg Holt missed at the beginning. But like I said, Greg Holt, even by missing the tackles, has made an impact. He's forcing the runners to slow down, make a move on him to get by him, actually. Um, and Holt, you can see the captain of this defense. He's had not his best game, but still impacting the game. This is a big... Big defensive possession for the Jumbos, obviously, as the clock is winding under 10 minutes to go in this one. Second and nine for the Continentals at, the, at their own 40. Kenny Gray back in the shotgun, takes the snap. He'll throw out wide. Buddington with the catch. Buddington just short of the first down. Wrestled down by a ship. And that was just a quick button hook there to Buddington. It was a good play Shipping design. Shipping Beery with a the tackle there. It was a good play design there. You're expecting the run on second and nine. Instead, they go to the quick button hook, get a few yards. Now it's third and very manageable, only two yards. Big third down here for this jumbo defense. We'll see. We've seen the Continentals go to the run on these third and shorts. I would be expecting a run, and if not a run, a play action. Possibly an option here, but I think look for the run with David Kagan in. Kagan is the back. Big set in for the Continentals, and the run is to Kagan, and Kagan gets the first down, and he is across the 50 and to the 47 of the Jumbos. Yeah, just a big hole there. Offensive line has played great for Hamilton thus far, and uh, they do another great job there, making the hole, and uh, this keeps getting more and more of an uphill battle for, tough, for Tufts. Yep, they had some momentum, and just like it's happened all day, yep. the Continentals have squashed it a little bit. I mean, it's just tough, and like I mentioned earlier in the half, I mean, those points that they ran up at the end of the half, you know, getting the field goal uh, right as time expired, as well as the touchdown beforehand, you know, you wonder how different of a game this would be if those weren't to happen. You're right. Kenny Gray takes the snap to give it to David Kagan. David Kagan gets about six by the time that play is over. Just kept moving the feet. And you know, the turnover on the last possession was huge, but Tufts still has to do a better job of stopping the run. I mean, they were able to get the interception and turn it into a touchdown last time, but with time winding down, you can't keep letting Hamilton, you can't keep let, letting Hamilton get these five or six yard runs on first down. Hamilton's now out to the Jumbo 41 yard line. Hamilton just two yards, two yards, or now, Hamilton just eclipsing over 100 yards of rushing. Gray is in the gun. Takes the snap. They give this to Kagan, and Kagan's run down immediately. And there you go. That's exactly what Tufts needed. They were expecting the run. Saw it coming all the way. Tackle for a loss. Good, strong tackle there. Not quite sure who was in there, but it looks like maybe it was Timmons.
Now a huge third down. Clock continuing to run. But if Tufts wants to stay in this one, they're gonna need to stop here. Third and six. Stop was on the Shepard 43. Nick, by the way. The crowd is loud. Gray takes the snap. He's dropping back. Look at a pass. Swing out wide to Kagan. And Ninadovich gets it. It'll be close. It's gonna be close, but I think Kagan got the first. Oh no, I they're think gonna he's mark him just short. Yep. They're gonna mark him just short of the 38, it looks like. It's a jumbo ruling and it'll be fourth down. <coughs> On the last Excuse one, me. it was Chepnik with the tackle for the loss. Now an interesting call here. You can either try and run the ball and try and put this game out of play or punt it deep into tough sense. That's what they're electing to do. Interestingly enough, though, if they do switch things up, they have their quarterback out there in the they punter do. position. That they do. They could throw. They could run an audible right here. You know, it's been something to watch all day, but Hamilton with the lead, no really need for trickery uh, when punting. And here they just punted away. And, and it's a good one. one is going to go. That's going to be a touchback, or it should be at least. It looks like it was touched in the end zone. It is going to be a touchback. They're no, they're not going to call it a touchdown. Let's see this replay right here. Let's see. It the looks like it was like touched. It. it looks like it's definitely touched with a Hamilton defender with his feet firmly in the end zone. That's what our replay seems to show. Maybe a little bit of a missed call there by the referees. See, I agree, Noah. I thought the same thing as you. It was downed at first and then crossed the goal line. I think that when it was downed, the Hamilton player was in the end zone. That's what it looks like from my vantage point. So we'll get another replay of it. I know the Hamilton, the first Hamilton player to touch it, his hand was out of the end zone. It's, it's tough to see whether his feet were in the end zone. I know it was then touched by someone while the ball was crossing the goal line. Either way, first thing, first and 10 from the one yard line. Jacob Carroll dropping back to pass. He's nearly tackled. He's escaping and he throws incomplete. Good job by Carroll to not take a safety was a there. My throw. goodness. Very dangerous. I thought he was going down. Good play by the big senior. Still a lot of work to be done, 99 yards before even making this a one possession game. James Ball had good pressure on the quarterback there, forcing Carroll to throw it away. Now it's interesting because you have to be aggressive. You'd obviously like to run in this spot on the one, but no real choice for the Jumbos. They do run it here to Pedrini. I'm a safety. Is brought down immediately. If that's not a safety, it's really close. They'll say he just got out. Let's see our replay here. The give was to Borelli. Borelli brought down. I guess they say he just got out. Hamilton cannot believe it. Couple of couple of close calls near the end zone for the for the Jumbos for sure. And it becomes an interesting call if they do not get this third down or they don't really get too super close. I mean you're at your own three yard line. Practically be handing Hamilton points if you don't get it. Carroll looking to pass. He throws deep. That's a wobbly one. Looking for Armstrong incomplete. No flags and it will be fourth down and ten from the one. Armstrong was the intended target there. Not much time for Jacob Carroll. Not all that much he could have done there. No. Just released it. It was an unfortunate bounce there for Tufts. The fact that they were down at the one, really not much you could do. Um, and here you have to punt it away, unfortunately. I think it's very interesting that we saw Trevon Woodson in the last drive in a situation where he, they were clearly throwing the ball. And then here, he was not in there when it was a clear run situation. You know, that's a good point. No, I hadn't thought about that. But that really is a good point. Woodson has been used as a running quarterback. That's what his strength is. And in a, in a situation where that's what you need to get to get yourself some breathing room, they don't go to it. Let's see. They're going to call a delay a game against the Jumbos here. Wow. If they couldn't make it harder for themselves, the referee just moved the ball back about three inches because that's how close the Jumbos were to their own end zone. It's half the distance to the goal. I mean, you got to make sure this guy, you got to make sure the Walsh has at least a little bit of room to get this punt off. Flag thrown yeah, again. The flag. This might be a false start. Oh yeah, yeah. A legal substitution maybe. It's going to be against the Jumbos. 
And they're going to move them back even more. Illegal substitution is the call on that one. They physically cannot move that ball back any further. Any further would be a safety. Walsh takes the snap. His punt is blocked. And that's going to be a safety. And there you go. That was the issue. I mean, you just kept backing yourself up further and further. Here's the replay here. The snap goes to Walsh, and the pressure just breaks immediately. Look here, and unclear who got their hands on it. That may have been Robinson. Um, but, oh, no, I think we'll see who that was Either on the way. block there. But a big play, and that puts this game in an even tougher position for the Jumbos. I believe it was Zach Weinstein with the block there. I mean, when you look at Patrick Walsh, he likes to take a few steps once he catches the ball. Obviously, he wasn't able to do that. He tried to take one, and it was blocked. In that situation, you just got to catch it and put your foot on it, no matter what happens. Um, probably a little rattled after the three-yard punt earlier. Just really, a bad situation for Tufts. Really nothing for Walsh to do with that one. As nothing. soon as the ball was in his hands, pressure was bearing down on him. So Tufts will kick it away now, down 15. From their own 20, it's important to note, as opposed to the 40 usually. That was a good and kick. And Robinson retrieves it at the 10. He does not have much room to run. Oh, the tackle, the ball. falls out! And I think Hamilton I falls Hamilton on it. Hamilton fell on oh, it as well. Oh, that could have been a break for the Jumbos. That was it. That was the break Tufts needed. Jumbos are saying they have it. I, I it didn't Hamilton, look like it from yeah. our angle, and the refs agree. It's going to be Hamilton did jump football. On it. That would have been a break for the Jumbos had they been able to fall on it. Right, get the ball inside the 25, but instead it will be Hamilton ball. Still would have been an uphill battle. Tufts needs to get. We're looking at the replay right here. So Robinson had it. Cut, it, cut back, good move there. And just tried to do a little bit too much, and that ball bobbled. Fortunate bobble straight into the hands of another Hamilton player. And I couldn't see which tough return specialist it was, but he did get a hand in there and forced the ball out of Robinson. And that give is there, brought down quickly. So it was a Hamilton from the 40, right? First timeout of the half. Tufts using their timeouts aggressively with just under five minutes to go, calling a timeout here. Yeah, I think they realize at this point you need to get the ball back as soon as possible, try and get some points back up on the board. So, really an unfortunate series of events for the Jumbos here. They have had a very good half, they have. outscoring the Continentals 14 to two. Uh, you know, that was nearly the most fortunate safety of all time. If now, they could have recovered that fumble there. I mean, it was. And, and if you look ahead in Tufts' schedule, I mean, uh, they're 3-3, three and three, looking like it's going to be a loss here. They take on Colby, who is looking like they're going to pick up their first one today before taking on the undefeated Middlebury. So Tufts, assuming all goes to plan in those last two games, and, is, and ends here as it looks like it will, they'll go to 4-5 and five on the year. We'll see what ends up happening, though. We'll see. It's important for this Jumbo crew. We know a good tackle made there to stop Joe Park. It's important for these Jumbos to have a winning season. That's something that they have really been really been striving for, for sure. They wanted, they had big expectations for this year. They thought they could be really good. They had a really good win uh, versus Trinity. The year hasn't exactly gone as to plan in a game like today and in a game right. like the Amherst one where they had a real good shot to win it, right. unable to do so. Williams Wesleyan as was well. a tough one. Wesleyan too. Um, but I think that if they fall to three and four today, this is going to be a Jumbos team desperate, really hungry to get two wins in their last two games right. to make sure this is a winning season. No, I agree. I mean, you look tough last year, tough. Overall, they've had 21 contests with Hamilton, 16-5 and five against them in their history. The first one back in 1976. But last year, they beat them 29-2. to And the difference, the key difference, I mean, obviously, it's only putting up two points last year was Hamilton. But the key difference, what they allowed was Tufts' defense allowed negative 11 rushing yards last yeah. year. 
They have been run all over this season. Or, excuse me, this game, this season. Yeah, over 100 yards on the ground for Hamilton today. Here, dropping back, looking to pass, and that's the Good Kagan. Play. Wow, big strong tackle by Stephen Timmons there. will force a fourth down. So the Jumbos will get the ball back again. There you go. See if Tufts uses their final timeout. And I think they just did. So they hold a little bit of hope out. 4.46 left on the clock. Jumbo's down 15. Well, you know, as unfortunate as the safety was, it still is a two-possession game. Now, of course, instead of kicking two extra points to put yourself in the lead, now they have an extra point and a two-point conversion to try and tie the game. But still, it's not the end of the world. You know, Tufts yep. need, just needs to score quickly. They need to stop them. The no timeouts definitely hurts, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I mean, we'll see, but they can't let up a first down. Assuming they, even assuming they score when Hamilton gets the ball back, they can't let up a first down. Truthfully, they are in better stead right now, likely, than they would have been right. had that punt gotten off. Right. Would have put Hamilton at least in field goal range, most likely. Gray's back to punt. That one is end over end and out of bounds at about... Tufts, Tufts coaches are wanting it to be at the Hamilton 45. We'll see where they mark it. We'll see if the referees listen. It looks like it will be in the Hamilton half of the field. Well, we're not really sure. The referee's moving. Oh, It's going to be at, at the, 50. the 50. So good field position. you got to think the Jumbos are going for a quick strike here. Oh, absolutely. Which is interesting now that they have Woodson out. They do have Woodson out there. You're right. It's interesting the way that they're mixing these two guys in there. No real like definition of, you know, this would seem to be, again, like this would not seem to make a lot of sense given no. the profiles of the quarterbacks, but the Jumbo coaching staff knows better than us. I mean, it's an interesting play design with no timeouts at the 50, down 15 to just a little screen pass. I don't like the call, to be honest. I think you need. I'm with you. You need to make up time. You have no timeouts. You need to score as quickly as possible. And doing a screen pass that maybe get maybe gets three yards isn't really going to cut it right now. Mm -hmm. Woodson again, the quarterback. Morelli, the back to his right. Takes the snap, dropping back, looking to pass, and another, another screen. screen. Borelli's going to catch this one. Hopefully, get out of bounds. He crosses the 40. Good strong play. He's out to the 35 yard line and gets out of bounds. So the clock will stop at 4:30. Yeah, I mean, that was a good play, and that moved the chains. Uh, I think with Woodson in, you know if you're the Hamilton defense, it's going to be a different look. You're not just going to throw the ball downfield. The screen is an interesting look. It's got a high downside to it, but it worked there. And this one, Woodson keeps it himself. He's got a little bit of room. Wiggles out to the 27-yard line or so. Good, that was a great juke by Trevon Woodson right there to get another few extra yards. He's very elusive in that open field. This one he fires Screen. out to Armstrong. Armstrong catches it, trying to get out of bounds, and he does, but not before he gets into the red zone or just outside the red zone at about the 20. You know what? I'm going to give this Tufts offense a little more credit than I think than I think I have. I was doubting put bringing Woodson into the game and doing the short passes. It has worked, though. It has, but now Carroll comes back out into this game. We'll see if Likely that changes the rhythm. Uh, take a shot to the end zone, maybe. Empty set. Nope. Throwing looking back. For him to throw. Oh, Borelli looking to throw it himself. He does. If that's is that intercepted? That, that is. That is intercepted. Really ill-advised throw there by Don Borelli. We're going to see a replay here. That one was intercepted by Jared Schwartz, who had the nice pass breakup on Armstrong earlier. See Borelli looking to pass. Was not much going on downfield. Forces it either way. Incom uh, intercepted. Good play by Schwartz on the sideline yeah. to keep his feet in. I mean, it was it was a night. It was a tricky play design there. I, I don't. I you know, not a huge fan of the trickery in this situation. You kind of just need to put points up on the board. Um, they try and go for it anyway. It's picked off, and this one is most likely out of reach with Tufts having no timeouts left. Yep. Opportunities have been squandered many times. This is no different. Yep. Joe Park brings that one for a gain of a couple. And it was a good-looking drive. You know, Woodson put together a few nice plays. They had hope of scoring and then putting the, hands, putting the ball in the hands of Don Borelli with just under four minutes left. Not the right call for, for Jay Spelli uh, and his group. And Tufts will most likely fall to three and four in the season. Well, no, we look ahead to a contest between Tufts and Colby. 
which will be at Colby this year. Yeah, I mean, it should be a good one. Definitely a game of ju the Jumbos could win. Hopefully they can get right back on the right foot in that one. Right. Um, I mean, Mark look, brings that one for a couple. The, it was a tough game here. There are some positives to take away. I think the way that they bounced back in the second half. You know, had this game maybe not been a 27-point deficit at the half, maybe it was 17 or 20, this could be a different game. You know, Tufts did have momentum. Their defense stepped up. The only points allowed in the second half were on special teams. Um, that was the safety. So I think there are some positives to take away. I think the passing attack and the rush defense need some work for sure. Um, but overall, not as bad not as bad of an ending as it looked like it could have been at the half. You know, the, the, uh, the Tufts Jumbo showed a lot of pride in this one for sure. They came out after halftime being 9-27 and continue to fight hard. Obviously, likely going to fall short here as Joe Park rattles a big one off. All right, let's go down. And he's going to go down. That's going to bring us down to 2 minutes, 8 seconds. Yeah, Joe Park has just been killing the Tufts defense all day long. I mean, and if you look on the other side of the field, Hamilton... They were 2-3 and three going into a contest against Amherst, the team they hadn't beaten in 21 years. Looking like they're going to fall to 2-4. and four, Make a miraculous comeback, kicking a game-winning field goal with four seconds left. And now look at this. They go into Tufts, beat a team that, same record as them, on the road. It, you know, it's the momentum carrying through. And Hamilton has a very winnable game. They play Bates next week. So yeah, they're looking at a really good finish, a really good year for this program for sure. Absolutely. And excuse me, they actually play Middlebury next week before concluding the season with Bates. Okay. Joe Park, carry there, bobbled, but brings it. About right. 130 left. Either you'd way, think, though. Yeah, go for it. You'd think that Cole, uh, Hamilton would go into the victory formation to end this one with a couple of knees, but who knows? Yeah. I mean, with no timeout stuff, there's nothing Tufts can do about it. But this is a, middle, this is a Hamilton team that has showed a lot of things today. They show that they're not just a running offense, that they can pass the ball with a lot of confidence. Um, Kenny Gray has had a great day. Uh, and their receivers are the real deal. Um, you know, you've got uh, Donahoe and Buddington who have had great games. Sam Robinson putting together a nice day. All in all, it's been a very good showing for this offense. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, when we were looking at a lot of statistics preparing for this game, we saw big rushing numbers, very modest numbers from the quarterback position. Not bad numbers, but just any emblematic of them not using that passing attack as much as the right. rushing attack. Today, we've seen that there's no reason for that. Not Kenny Gray was explosive. He was on target, threw for those three touchdowns. When they took shots downfield, he hit the men. Um, their receivers created separation. This is a team that can win in a couple of different ways. Definitely a good squad for Hamilton as they're about to kneel down and finish this they game are. off. And I mean, it's unfortunate for a team like Hamilton that there's no playoffs for this sport in the NESCAC because you look at a team like this, they've come on hot in the last few, in, the, in this last stretch of the season. Um, and they, you know, had there been playoffs, they could do some damage. But unfortunately, there won't be. Uh, they go to four and three on the year after a good win here. But um, either way. That'll do it here for this game. Again. Hamilton Continentals 36, the Tufts Jumbos 21. Thank you for listening to today's production on Tufts JumboCast. We hope you enjoyed it.